Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Australian Vintage Computer Collector Zoom catch up for August 2022. Before I begin, I'd like to point out that this is being recorded so others can view later. I'd like to welcome the newcomers to this chat. But before we do that, uh, we'll just find, catch up with Ian because he's on a tight schedule and then we'll uh, welcome the new people. So Ian, tell us what you've been doing for the last eight weeks. <laughs> what have I been doing? No. Uh, a month ago, we had the, uh, the, the return finally since 2019, I think it was, of the uh, computer swap meet get togethers for the Melbourneian. And, um, and then today we had it again today. We had a fantastic turnout. Um, we were easily the most popular, uh, um, uh, you know, group there at the computer swap meet so much so that the, um, that the other vendors there were hoping we would come back because we draw in so many people, so much enthusiasm into the place. So, uh, it, um, we had, I think, 12 tables this time. And, and what do you reckon, Anthony? Maybe 50 different systems? Up yeah, what was really good about this time is um, there was no fewer than three computers on each table. So uh, and 12 across, that's a, a fair number of machines. And we had quite a broad spectrum of um, literally um, Amstrad's, um, I yeah. don't actually think, I don't think actually there was a spectrum. That would have been a great sort of uh, segue, but uh, no spectrums, um, IBMs, um, VZs, Tandys, yeah. Macs. Yeah. How, uh, can there be no, how can there be no spectrums? Come on. There was even a TI-994A with the expansion box today. So <laughs> some good stuff. But there was, there was also Malcolm's uh, PDP-1134, which was... Uh, which was actually up and running with five terminals, so that was uh, that was quite a quite an effort on, on his part, and um, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, so um, yeah, and we got some newbies there, and which is William, who was there um, today. He's in the group, and he'll tell us about himself a bit later on. Um, absentees: Rob Caporetto. What happened? Keysboro is basically impossible for me to get to. That. <laughs> Patrick Patrick picked you up at the train station. Brain made it. There's, there's like no train within walking distance. Yeah, I know it sucks, doesn't it? Um, yeah. But uh, it, um, I'm sure someone would uh, would offer you a, a ride. But anyway, we'll um, we we just got to put these things where we can. I'd like to go back to Juan Turner, but I don't think we're ever going to go back to Bandura because um, getting the room there uh, at RMIT, it, Alan's finding it a little bit on the on the difficult side. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, we had a good day and you were sorely missed. Stuart Bunning, same deal. Where were you? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's, and, that, and that's why I missed the last couple of these meetings too. And uh, I, I, today I was just scrolling through Facebook and I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> oh, there they all are. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, uh, yeah. Um, for future reference, uh, you don't have to book a table with me or whatever. We can generally with the size of the places now you just show up and say hey uh man, can you call up an, another table they'll just take another table off the off the pile and um and, and we can set you up in about five minutes flat but um yeah it, it was a good one today were you at the, the the largest one we had back in 2019 where malcolm's machine mini computer was there and the power went out about three times yeah that one uh, and, like the, and the uh the 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 Table stretched about 15, 1.8 meter tables long. It was like ridiculous. It was like, shit, this is a real hobby. <laughs> uh, I wasn't. I've been to a couple, but no, I missed those. I missed the little okay. ones, unfortunately. But anyway, yeah, uh, I was, you would have loved it. And um, so, anyway, long story short, we're, um, we're just starting again with our two monthly uh, ones. So, we'll be doing it again in October, uh, the next one. And it will either be, Keysborough or Juan Turner? Buy a bicycle, Rob. Uh, I'll pick you up at the train station, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> someone has to represent the spectrums. <laughs> I'll see what I can I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Yeah. You're the spectrum guy, aren't you? I'm thinking... I could do spectrum. I mean, you've already got the C64 stuff done. Uh, I could do spectrum. I could do the FC3K. I could bring my MSX. Yeah. Um, Acorn Electron. BBC Master is probably a bit too big. Mm. There, there's a bunch of stuff that, from what I saw at the, the shots that Dave post in the group, that 
I could fill a gap with something. Well, no, I believe Dave did bring an MSX, so. Yeah. Yes, he did. There's, there's a few gaps that I can fill. I could fill. I Another going- thing, other highlights of the day that was uh, was worth, oh, we had a lady there called um, um, Lego McKay. Her name's Susan, um, who joined us. She's been selling her uh, stuff from her father's estate, who's an electronics engineer and, and I don't know, computer tinkerer or something so she had a lot of eclectic stuff there which was uh, really well priced so i hope she had a good day there um i bought a i bought a, a a bunch of stuff off her mainly floppy disks which i'll be reformatting and uh, a few other things one thing that, pe- that maybe people didn't see there was a um a copy of cubase the music software um with the required dongle and the software for windows 3.1 so um uh, it's mainly thought of one. That's weird. I saw yeah. that, Ian, but I only saw one disc and no dongle. Where'd you have the dongle? I don't know. I dig further into the box and oh. found a dongle. Oh, okay. Um and uh yeah, it had the disc there, and I sort of quickly read through the the info and it only has one 720k disc, so it's not a very big program. Oh, really? That's the whole that was the whole thing. Because it was actually in a folder and there was multiple slots, and yeah. I thought there's yeah. half the discs are missing but yeah but once you took the one disc out you saw that the other slots may have may at some point have had discs in, or may have been designed to have additional discs in them but they were flattened like they've never had a disc in them in their in their life so i took a punt on it and um 3.1 system requirements four megs ram and a 386 sx so great for me great for music production um and uh yeah just some other stuff she had there so that was good i guess i got some computer magazines for the trs 80 and and so on so uh yeah i uh had a uh, had a good time william wishart was there for the first time with his amstrads he'll talk more about it when he's uh when he's on here and um yeah the uh i think uh those that were there um uh, generally had a had a pretty good time it was a good a good uh a good use of a Sunday that um, was sort of raining and a bit miserable here in Melbourne. So it's better, better things to do. Is that your cat there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> thought, thought a tail appear in the camera. Um, yeah. And then David was there. David, what do you think? Merton? Oh, yeah, it was a great day. Um, uh, and uh, like you, I bought some stuff off um, off Lego as well, and uh, and there's some really way out stuff there that was really interesting. And uh, uh, the PDP11 was great to see running as well, and uh, some of those tele types really shook the floor when they were going too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the most impressive Intellivision setup I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely, it's absolutely like brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Any questions for me uh, before we move on to the next person? Or is that all you've done for two months? Pretty much. I've sort of done a lot of. Uh, well, I bought a Mazda RX-8. Not interested. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> so that's all I've done. <laughs> getting ready to do. Getting ready to do to do track days again and uh, and doing computer shit. So that's all I've done with my my and you know watch my. Uh, gas bill go through the roof trying to keep my house warm uh, yeah. because uh yeah, well it's melbourne and it's the middle of winter so uh, yeah so that's really all i've done i'm going to tandy assembly by the time the next one of these comes around i probably probably either a, about to go to tandy or assembly or i'll be there um that's in ohio so um we'd so, love to hear all about that we can't yeah. wait to hear from you uh, and your wrap up on that yeah i'll do that and um I, I sort of found out a little bit too late that VCF Midwest was on about a week or so before that. And so it, it, it gives rise to a possibility of flying to the US, going to one, coming around uh, Ohio for a, for a week and then doing Tandy assembly and heading home. So I'm going to look into the feasibility of that in 2023. Cool. Very good. All right. No worries. Well, now we're going to like to welcome William Wishart, who's come for the first time, although we met him today. So uh, tell us about yourself, how you got into computers and what you collect. Well, computers for me started probably in about, uh, would have been about grade five or grade six in, in primary school. And that was uh, that was an Amstrad CPC 464 with a 
GT65 green screen and um, yeah, and a whole heap of tapes and games. And then uh, then we upgraded uh, eventually after a couple of years to a 6128 with a color screen. And I got a printer with that one. So I could actually then use it for homework and print stuff out in, uh, in year seven. And then I suppose would have been probably about Probably around about year nine, I think, when we started doing work experience. I did uh, did work experience uh, uh, with my cousin who ran a ran a franchise of Pacific typewriters in Springvale, and um, yeah, I started working uh, with him over the school holidays, and then that eventually led to being my uh, my first job. So I was repairing typewriters on a repair bench, and and um, we did computers as well there. So I spent quite a lot of time running up three eight sixes and installing DOS from floppies and then installing Office on, you know, the, the, the 30 odd floppy disks that came on originally. You um, mean the typewriters with the things that fling up and jam, the yeah. manual typewriter, those things? Yeah, or, those things. Golf, or the IBM golf ball. IBM golf balls. Um, oh, geez, we did Smith Corona, elect, elect, you know, Daisy Wheel typewriters, uh, Canon, Brother. Oh, um, Stuart, John, he's quick on Office. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> photocopiers and oh, we did everything through there um but yeah and that that eventually when i started working there that led to me obtaining my first ibm pc which was a, a 286 with two meg of ram and an ega card and um from then obviously working in the industry for many years until uh till the uh, till a fire burnt the place down after after about four years of working there so from there i went and started working in a warehouse um and spent that doing that for a few years and worked my way through that company till I eventually worked my way up to IT manager um, that was looking after eight sites and about 500, 500 staff. Um, so that kept me busy for about 10 years of my life. And I've uh, decided one day that I just had enough of dealing with, um, with idiots and idiot management people and decided that I'd go and do something different. So I now, uh, I now mow lawns and trim shrubs for a living, but um I've always uh, always tried to uh, keep my finger on the pulse of what's modern, but I also like like my old machines. Like I've got, um, uh, what have I got here? A Commodore 64 here. I've got obviously the Amstrads um, behind me over here. This is a this is a 486DX4. Obviously there's uh, some bits and pieces I brought of Ian a month or so ago that made up a 286 to uh, try and recreate something similar to that first IBM PC I had. Um, I've got a, Another Amstrad CPC uh, PC1640 sitting over there, but that's got some faulty memory chips in it. So I've got to uh, got to dive into that and work out which ones are defective and get them out and pop them back in. And yeah, there's a stack of other computers sitting over here and the Amstrad XT portable. Um, and yeah, a stack of CRT screens and all sorts of other stuff sitting out here in my little my little man cave. Yeah, it sounds like you uh, are going to fit right in with this little community. <laughs> and th and then, then of course, there's the vintage audio gear that I've got as well. So oh. I've got like tube tube based amplifiers. Um, I've got a I don't know if you can see it over over there that black black box in the background. That's a um. Hang on, if I just pop the cover off, it's like a TV. That's a um. Nice. That's a, a tube-based roller, seventy-seven Mark III reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Yeah. So um, it's the second one of those I've owned over the years. I had a, had a red one many years ago, and I ended up obtaining this one that was in much better condition and selling the uh, the red one off to someone who wanted it. Um, but no, um, most of most of my hi-fi gear is actually you'll appreciate this, Ian. It's all it's all realistic from Tandy. <laughs> that was most of mine. So I've got a I've got an STA twenty eighty and a SCT thirty three and SCT thirty one hundred TR three thousand um, TR eight oh three eight track um, Pro sixty headphones to go with it. So it's all eighty eighty one. I've tried to try and make a complete complete system of that year, and obviously Mac one speakers to go with it. So hmm. that'll so oh, cool. What's interesting to note, uh, Anthony, is that um, you think we're all kind of, you know, connected, all of us in this retro computing hobby. William didn't know about us until about this time last month when uh, he was buying uh, some stuff for his project from me. And I said, you should come along to the 
the last swap meet, which he did, and then has obviously come along this time and uh, and joined the group and showed off his uh, his hobby. So um, pretty crazy. There are, it's amazing how many people are out there. There's probably heaps that that don't know about it. That, that I'm, I'm running out of ideas of how to get the word out, but don't know. Which it's actually surprising that there's still more people out there who are sort of disconnected from the hive mind. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what surprises me is that I never come across you guys on Facebook, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a member of a few other, like, you know, the DOS gaming one, Amstrad PCs, Amstrad CPC groups and other stuff, but I've never come across, obviously never came across this group to, uh, uh, to join on Facebook other than when I met up with Ian last month. Well, we're a small group. We've only got seventeen hundred odd members, haven't we, uh, Anthony? Yep, something like that. <laughs> something like that. But yeah, like that. It, um, you know, if you if you know anyone or you hear of anyone, don't forget to spread the word. It would have been uh, would have been good if we could have got some of the the people from the recently formed Retro Computer Club along today. But I did give them a bit short, of a short notice before um, before our event. But uh, maybe next time. Cool. No. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, William. Um, now let's move on to Michael. Now, uh, if you would mind introducing yourself. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I haven't played with my retro computer stuff for quite a while. I've got a 10 year old and a 12 year old, but um, I'm working a whole lot less than I have done. And I went to the retro computer fair in Canberra a few weekends ago. And uh, that got me uh, got me back to it a little bit. Um, and one of the things I've had to do is is liquidate some some stuff. And I've had some, and that's been my main activity recently is is trying to make sense of a collection that uh, got away from me a little bit. Um, I'm a Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm a Commodore person. Um, I had a 64, and then my mum got a job at Tech and. And I was still in high school, bought us an Amiga 2000 hard drive with a couple of mega fast RAM and a second floppy drive for um, for stuff. <laughs> and it was, um, I was king of the hill. Um, and I really loved it. And as for PCs, I, I um, in the second year of law school, once I was sick and tired of carrying postscript files to uni across multiple floppies um, from, from, from Wordsworth on the Amiga, I... Um, I bought a PC and it had Windows 3.11 for work groups on it. And um, after using Amiga DOS, I felt like I'd been lobotomized. It, it was dreadful. I think maybe if I'd started on Windows 95, I'd have a lot more regard for PCs. But um, I've, 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 uh, and look, I've got lovely ones and I build my own and, and they're really cool and they're extremely powerful, but they're, they're uh, I don't have a substantial emotional attachment to any of them, except for this, this part here. I just grabbed off a shelf, show and tell, which is a um, CPU. a uh, thermal right AX7, probably the first 80 millimeter um, fan based um, heatsink for a PC socket A and the uh, Intel equivalent. Um, beautiful thing. I'll, I'll uh, treasure it forever. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been I've been selling a lot of stuff on the Retro Computer Club buy swap sale. Yep. Um, and the wonderful thing about that is that everybody who's bought something off me has been really, really cool. Um, I'm loath to tick the button to list it on the greater um, ACT Facebook buy swap sell because of the mixed caliber of customers that it attracts. Um, but um, I'll, I'll have to do that for some of the items, I think. Um, I sold, um, I got it working and then sold a, an XT sidecar for an Amiga 1000 recently, which was um, Ooh. Ooh. rare as chicken lips. And um, I've sold a couple of Amiga 1000s. I've probably got another one to go. But anyway, that, I'm not here to sell stuff, but that's what I've been doing. Um, and then I took some of the proceeds and I've bought one of these new um, Amiga 2000 remake boards. Oh. Um, and um, I have to figure out an efficient way to water a, a stack of parts on um, hopefully Element 14 and and, and build my favorite computer from scratch. There's, there is a bomb list for it with, uh, I think, Mauser part numbers. I think I've got a copy of that because I've got the, I'm assuming the same board. It came out of the US, the one that I got. So 
Right. Well, thanks, David. I, I, I did. I did see that list. What I'm hoping I can find, figure out, is some way of just, you know, it's not mail merge, but but some way of not having to type them all into. Ah, uh, the Mauser yeah. search. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm actually wondering. Element 14 always treated me like I was running the space program. I'm, I'm wondering if I should. And and I opened an account with them as a hobbyist to get a catalog about 15 years ago. And I was amazed they accepted me. I don't even have an APN, but they kept sort of bringing me up and offering me customer support. I'm thinking about sending them the list to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like my chances, but, um, but yeah, I'm just sick of battery damage. I've got an Amiga 3000 over there, which was sold to me as possibly working and for a fair, very fair price many years ago. But, when I opened it up, the battery damage was, and I'm, I'm just, I'm so sick of it. I'm gonna, I've gone full gorilla mode on battery damage in order to brand new motherboard. Um, and it seems to be very genuine. They, they made it with like high res photos, I think of an original late revision motherboard. So it's not, yeah, I think the only difference from the original is that it doesn't look for a VATA uh, nickel metal oh. high drive, it looks for a button cell. I think aside from that, the, the track layout, it's just exactly, exactly the right thing you know so um so that should be a bunch of fun and um i'm a retired lawyer cool um in terms of work that's probably enough unless someone's got no worries some 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 oh, and i've got it i've got a rack mount amiga 1200 i keep a blog with some details of stuff all sorts of stuff on and i'm just about to do a recap on it <laughs> um, I'd really like to find a an old board with some surface mount caps on it to practice on, but honestly, it looks really straightforward. And I've just been sorting through my old soldering stations, trying to assemble a collection of stuff which I can contaminate with lead. <laughs> I, I really, I really prefer not to. So I've got half a dozen Mac Classic motherboards you can destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have um, surface mount capacitors on them? Yep, yep. I've destroyed yeah, them right. by trying to repair them. <laughs> You you destroyed them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I gotta say, uh, when the when the caps leak and you try and you're like, oh yeah, I've got it, I've got it, and then the trace comes off and you're like, oh no. Yeah, right. I've got a Hoya rework station, just a basic one. So I'm hoping. You should definitely practice. You should definitely practice. Yeah. You gotta practice. Uh, get some scrap. Yeah. yeah. Get so some scrap that, boards from somewhere. What was that, Ian? I said, you got to practice on something. It might as well be Mac Classic. Absolutely. No one gives a... <laughs> uh, I, I only have two Mac things here. I have an Amax 2 Plus in my 2000, which is hilarious. It's It's got the original hard drive on. It's full of wedding invitations in Quark Express or something. I don't I do not do Mac. And I have a G4 Mac Mini, but it's got Morpho S sprayed all over it. So it, that does, <laughs> it doesn't... Um, Morpho, do you know Morpho is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. And it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I just couldn't, I thought I had a board with surface mount caps on it, but it, it didn't have any. It, it can't be that hard. I mean. If you want to practice, rip I, apart your TV in your lounge room, I guarantee it's got surface mount caps. What a great idea. <laughs> that 4K QLED stuff is yeah. just so yesterday, right? <laughs> just, just. <laughs> It's all 8K now. Come on. Yeah, that's we'll right. Yeah, I know. Stop. Does it have 3D? Because 3D glasses are the future, man. Yeah, right. That's, that's where it's at, man. We'll be all <laughs> listening to Yes when we're in space too. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I need to I need to recap it so that they don't leak. But um, but it's a rack mount unit. It, oh, like a proper. I bought it from a dude on eBay. Yeah, I've got one um, exactly the same. I remember that. I, I remember it, seeing... It that, it. Was that I a couple of a, years ago? Was that a couple of years ago that was on eBay? Quite a few now, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that. I was just like, what on earth is that? They actually was, came out of the UK. Um, the boards were bought from um, Commodore directly, I think. Wow. It's, it was really nice. I mean, plenty of room in there. I think it probably ran a lot cooler than under a keyboard and I do wonder about replacing the Nichicon caps at all, but um, I put in a ACA 1233 accelerator and a, a keyboard adapter and a, um, and a Indivision 
click a fixer thing and um it goes like a goddamn and it <laughs> and it runs everything of course and um I, I really really like it um, yeah I, I plan to put a 12 uh, ts 1260 in mine and use it for bars and pipes and that sort of thing in my home studio setup yeah sweet no it's it's, it's been it's been awesome um and if I, I pulled out the um the RF modulator out of it and the cutout in the back of the case is a perfect size for the um, DVI connector on, on the Indivision flicker fixer, which was a happy, a happy surprise. But yeah, I, I really would prefer to practice doing some cap removal. I think soldering on is a piece of cake, but um, I muck around with analog audio electronics as well, like analog crossovers and loudspeaker construction and design as well. But anyway, yeah. Thanks well, for um, having me along. It's, um pretty cool yeah well good luck with uh you, you really should practice before you touch that 1200 you, yeah. you you can make some pretty awful decisions um or and you don't even know you're making those decisions yeah anyway yeah well welcome just, just um, go on gumtree and literally search for free electronics yeah, TVs, yeah. anything new that's given away for free probably doesn't work and it's yeah. definitely got surface milk so Get oh, I've got, old I've DVRs. Got... Yeah, plenty of hard rubbish with DVRs or tally. Yeah. Oh. Go, go the tip. Go the tip. That's go a good idea. I've stuff. also got some e-waste. And whenever I'm chucking in the e-waste bin at the dump, I um, always have a look to see if there's anything worth taking. So maybe I can just pick something up. Yeah. Yep. Um, I picked up a 486DX266 once, pulled the cap off it and threw it in the corner, and I swapped it for a carton of beer a while ago. What a, what a win. <laughs> Oh, very good. Okay, well, uh, uh, nice to meet you. Now uh, we will just continue on. So next is Henry. Henry, what have you been doing for the last eight weeks? Um, not that much. Um, actually, one for Pat, um, because Mr. Brain sort of got my um, my juices flowing. But Pat, oh. I, I got a, hang on, where is it? You see it? You need to take that blur off, man. Oh, it's no, like I, the I, invisible I, MSX. No, it's anyway, Enterprise 128. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, so there you go. Finally picked one up. Um, yeah, picked it up um, pretty much for a song from a, a, a seller in Hungary. Weird thing was I, I, I ordered it on the, the Monday and it rocked into Melbourne the following Tuesday. Like it was basically it was like eight working days to, to ship from Hungary. So, is, that, is that Henry Liu that I sold my, uh, my micro drive to? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Henry. Good to see you finally. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yes. And that's going to I'm like myself and um and David. Um, of course, we're, we're all big specky guys. So yeah, my yep. drive's going well. Um, it's it's got my pride in place. Um, that's yeah, both so, spectrums. That's both spectrums of shipping coming out of uh out of Europe. You know, yours is in seven days, and someone who was it before said something took eight months. Yeah, that was <laughs> me. Was it? <laughs> I remember um, I bought those Intellivision cartridges and I gave up on them. So I ordered them again and then they turned up. Eight months later or so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so the worst thing is about the, um, the enterprise um, computers. I only, only realized this after I got it, but there was only 80,000 of them produced ever. <laughs> um, and about 20,000 of them end up in Hungary, which is actually where the big secondhand market is for it. Um, but there's no, there's pretty much no third-party peripherals. So all of the like the video cables, um, audio cables, um, the SD cards are all like homebrew, like real homebrew stuff. So um, it's almost not impossible to get anything for it. So I've got my little CAS SVI, and that's probably about the only way to actually get any software onto it at the moment until the guy that actually uh, produces those SD cards actually responds to my Gmail, um, my, um, my email messages, because he still hasn't responded back to them at the moment. Um, but the other thing I picked up is the, um, I picked up a, a Micro B 128 from Craig Sutherland and uh, a monochrome monitor. And um, that's going to get sent off to Micro B Technologies. It just needs a new keyboard and power supply and whatnot. But looking forward to playing around with that and on the lookout for a computer in a box. I know it's not, uh, probably that the the um the most optimal thing to buy but i want the the whole cardboard original etc rather than just going down at the gotex um you, you're smart you're smart getting the um keyboard done by um microbeam it, yeah. it was a pain in the ass 
I'd yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy, and, and um, I think Ewan, Evan, Ewan, I can never remember. Ewan, 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 Ewan yeah. Ewan. So Ewan said, yeah, it's 80 bucks. I'm like, yeah, 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 just don't do it. Like, don't, don't even, don't even worry about it. Um, and Graham Bond, something for you. I've got, where's that? I've got your power supply for the um, Apple eMate. So ready to pick up at any, 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 any stage. Oh, uh, yeah, I keep on forgetting about that. Yeah. <laughs> MP Cameron Bond. Oh, yeah. What did you say? Uh, Graham Bond. No, no, Cameron. Graham, uh, yeah. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, I'm bad Cameron, with names yeah. today. Yeah, um, but I'm getting new carpets. I'm um, putting in yeah. next. I'm getting new carpets. I'm um, put into my apartment um, next I'll, weekend. I'll catch oh, it all next week. Sorry, okay, Henry. You're right, I got I got I to go. I got to go get my son from the airport. So safe flight. Uh, good seeing you today and uh, and at the uh, at the Zoom here, and we'll uh, see you next month. Cheers. See you. Ian. Bye. See you. Yeah. You were saying, Henry? Yeah. So. Um, so you, but for those on the vintage groups, remember, um, I also collect a lot of vi um, vintage video game consoles. So I've got one spare bedroom just set up for all my computers, and I've got the lounge room set up for um, all of my old video games consoles. But um, I've ha I had them in nine IKEA Deltoff cabinets. If you know yep. the Deltoffs, they're the the glass ones. Anyway, um, my mate comes in and goes, if you think I'm going to help you move them when you need to clear your place out for the carpet, you've got another thing coming. So um, I've um, been taking the time to um, basically take out all of my old equipment, all of my old display hardware and putting in new, new stuff. So it's been a matter of actually just buying and building lots and lots of new IKEA um, um, furniture as well. So I've got that all up and running. So I've taken some videos and whatnot, but it's actually looking pretty slick. Uh, can, you show, you can you show us one day? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd love to see, uh, you don't want to see mine. Mine's pretty untidy, but uh, I'd like to see, uh, you know, sweet setups. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> in fact, um, what I might do after this is uh, I take some photos of some quick videos and, and shoot, shoot them up on the Zoom for you if you like. Sounds great. Yeah, but um, before I head off, um, the only thing oh, to to um, take some videos for you, um, I just wanted to ask, what happened with the PC? Um, um, was it PC Junior? What happened with um, the, the the eBay purchases a couple of months ago um, with those, Anthony? Because you were looking at buying, I think it was, I'm sure it was PC um, um, Junior software. Oh, or, the JX software. JX yes. software. I, yeah. I only got one title. Yeah, so of best. those title, I ended up with just Jumpman for the JX, yeah. which uh, increases my collection by another one. But um, there's a uh, there's a gentleman who's um, uh, a bit a bit keener to spend a bit more money than I am on these titles. What did they end up selling for? Uh, one dollar more than I bid on. Oh yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> it's just always the way you're like, I'm going to, this is the price I'm going to pay. Yeah. I was second place, but. Oh, sorry. At last thing, I what are they? Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what? Okay. So, so IBM has a, uh, IBM had a computer, the PC junior in America and um, in Australia and Japan and New Zealand, they had a machine called the JX, which uh, I brought actually to the uh, expo today. And um their box software is hard to get and um, I'm going to move it close and you can see, um, there you go. It's branded IBM JX and I'm sorry it's backwards because uh, that's the nature of cameras. No, um, right but uh, so getting these JX titles is hard to get. So over, um, over here, there's what, a dozen, two dozen JX titles, but getting them all is impossible and they're rare as hen's teeth. And when they come up, there's like three people who bid on them and I know all three of them. <laughs> and, and one of them is, is just a bit more enthusiastic than I am. So uh, power to him. Uh, I'll just wait for the next one. <laughs> and, and congratulations to the three of you for not establishing a cartel. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to establish a cartel, but they're not in it. Hey, um, last purchase. I just found, I just remember one last purchase. I'm sorry, Mab's actually gone, but um, also picked Ooh. up. A Toshiba, um, um, is it TRS eighty model one hundred? Yeah, model one hundred. So, um, and this was, you know, you say you you only lost out by one dollar. Mm -hmm. This was just a, a totally random bid um, up on um, up on eBay, and I think I paid total. This is from the UK, including shipping. I think I paid about one hundred forty dollars, and it's basically mint, except there's one Australian price. dollars. Australian dollars for it. Have you opened it up yet? Um. To um to repair the LCD, 
No, because the batteries leak and they wreck the boards and the keyboards. No, no, the battery's fine. Um, it was um totally. Uh, oh, you mean the internal battery? Yes. Oh no, I haven't. I, I should. I should um fire it up then or, or open it up then. But it's still working at the moment. Yeah, and if you take the battery, if the battery's flat and take it out, it won't work. You have to replace it. We put a capacitor across it. It just doesn't. The power supply doesn't work properly. Okay. But yeah, no, I've got two of them, and one of them, yeah, got a lot of damage from that, and you can fix it. But depends on which way it was sitting. If it's sitting one way, it'll wreck the board. If it's sitting the other way, it'll wreck the keyboard. So. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, um, off. Um, I'm out for that. Um, so that's my update. Perfect. It's, there's there's also a couple of um, big capacitors in the power supply of those that will leak and um, corrode traces too. So it's worthwhile opening it up while it's alive and making sure that it continues to be alive. Cheers. Thanks, Doug. Cool. Stephen. Yes. Well, I'll put my hand up as the buyer of the 1060, Amiga 1060 from Michael. Very pleasant transaction. It was great to, to meet Michael. Actually, I might have been the one who invited him along to this potentially. Oh, wow. But um, it, yeah, so that was one to check off the list. So I'm happy with that. But um, the other thing over the past couple of months, I managed to check off another list from my uh, wanted items. And so that's oh. two of three, two of three. Of the top three things that I've, I wanted, so uh, here you see if you can see if you can identify it. Oh no, it's a CD TV monitor. CD TV monitor. Oh the, the, yeah, the black, the black 1084. Yeah, I got it. And uh, all credit, all credit goes to Pat on this one. So Pat, thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. You're a lifesaver. I, I got and it was only one kidney, I imagine, hey. <laughs> It How much did bad. that cost you? It wasn't too bad. It was in the, I actually can't remember the exact price, but it was, I was just ready to go. I was just going for it. So I didn't pay a lot of attention to say the truth. <laughs> it was in euros and then you got to add posting and GST. And I just didn't, I don't think I paid a lot of attention. So I can't remember. It was in the hundreds. It wasn't in the thousands. So. Oh, that's great. So it might cost yeah. you worst case, $400, $500. I think, it, yeah, probably more than that. But yeah, oh. yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 5000 <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah so so this is the thing right so now because i had a i have a cd tv that's fully pimped like it's got the keyboard the black keyboard i've got two black disc drives i've got oh, the mouse. trackball the trackball which is really hard to get and um i've got the mouse and so i had the whole thing but the, the only thing that was missing was the monitor so for years i'm looking for this monitor and um Pat came through with a good sale. Are you a spotter's fee or some beer or something, Pat? But um, thank you for uh, fulfilling that that uh, highly wanted item for me. He, Pat spotted it last time we met on uh, on eBay. Yeah, I could probably go back and have a look at how much it went for, actually. Well, it's worth it. It just sort of closes that chapter. It's everything you needed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to setting that whole thing up, actually. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, on the theme of black things, I, I also managed to get a 1551, the, the, the black disk drive for the C16 plus four. And it's boxed actually, it's in it's in awesome, awesome condition. And it's boxed with all the original um, stuff, accessories. Um, that was, um, yeah, probably a couple of months ago, I think, or some, something like that. So yeah, and then- um, does, it, does that actually work or have you, it, is it, uh, have you tested it yet? I haven't tested it, no. But I mean, looking at it, the condition is, is excellent. So unless it's got damage somehow internally, either on the way down or something, um, I assume. Well, it's not, yeah, no, well, see, the thing with those is the PLAs were really well known to let go, and that's in the um, in the cartridge part. Uh, I've actually had to fix a few like that. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And also the um, uh that funny thing that was in the magic voice cartridge as well that was 6525 chip oh yeah, yeah. yeah essential was it the, the tri-state tri tripod yeah 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 yeah, Interface tripod, adapter, adapter, yeah, yeah, yeah. did um, i get one off you yeah 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 because yeah, you were looking for one so um they tend to go in the 1551 as well so um uh the plas are replaceable with a uh the, the one from uh, individual computers will actually do the 1551. Um, 
And if you need the 6525s, I've still got a few of those left. So, But yours is going to work, Stephen, so you don't need to worry about no, any so. of that. Yeah, Just throw awesome. that information out. <laughs> yeah. I have to decide. Should I put it with the C16 or the plus four? Plus four. I'll, I'll, it looks better with the plus four. Yeah. But I yeah. tell you what's but what I find interesting is yours came in exactly the same condition mine it came. It came in a the cardboard shipping box with the plastic mm. foam in a plastic yeah. sleeve with yeah. the manual. I bought that 25 years ago. So I'm wondering wow. if there's a warehouse of these things sitting there. <laughs> that's just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've got lucky with that one because they don't they don't normally um come boxed and they don't normally go for reasonable prices. But I think this was reasonable. From, from memory but the other thing i managed to get is um i managed to pick up a monitor for a sinclair pc 200 i thought that was quite unusual like a, a very unusual thing to, to find and so now i'm on the lookout for a sinclair pc 200 which are also very hard to find i think so um i might add that to my wanted list in place of this uh, this monitor i don't even know what a sinclair pc 200 is it looks like an it looks like a black amiga 500 actually yeah it's, so it's a PC clone from the the Amstrad years. It's basically equivalent oh. to like one of those, just in a yeah black wedge form factor. Okay. Mm. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but apart from that, yeah, that's all. I've been, I've been, um, despite what, um, despite those few things, I've been slowing down in the buying because I'm running. I've run out of room well and truly, and um, yeah, so <laughs> I think I'm going to take a break. So I probably won't have um, too much to report on the buying front next month. Cool. Very good. Uh, it's 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 good to stop buying and actually start doing. Um, yeah. Okay. Although I can't say that I've stopped buying and I'm not doing much doing. Yeah. Steve, uh, cool. Have you got the sidecar working? No, I haven't yet, Michael. I, I, I look forward to doing that, but um, I haven't got a big backlog of stuff. I can't see it happening for for a long time, actually. But um, it'll be. Um, I really look forward to it, and I'll. I might. Um, lean on you a little bit when it comes to the setup because I, I know you said it was it was complex yeah it's just the um the power on sequence my, yeah. my recollection is that the only way to do it safely is to because the Amiga the omega 1000 plugs into the um sidecar and the sidecar plugs into the mains and mm. when you turn the sidecar on the omega 1000 has to be on or come on which means right. that if the switch on the side of the Omega 1000 is off, I think that's how it works. When you turn on the sidecar power, um, you'll let all the pressure smoke out of it. Uh, so yeah. you, but 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 it's it's very well documented and very easy to find the information. Yeah. But as I think I said to you in those messages, me measure thrice, cut once, because yeah. you, you know you plug something into the wall and you go, oh that power point was on, and then oh well. Oh no, it's, it's all over. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's 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 you know, like I mean, I I was working with something I didn't know if it even worked, but my Amiga did, and I was I was super careful. I, I stopped short of, you know, making a sort of a, a, a an aerospace style um checklist for it, but it, it honestly wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, hats off to you, Michael, for, for keeping it in such great condition. I mean, the thing's in beautiful condition. Cool. It's immaculate. I've no idea, like I said, though, if that, that floppy drive works. I was unable to test that. Like the, the, the five and a quarter inch. Yeah. No, but no, it was, it was a beautiful example. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad it found a home. All right. Well, is there anything else you want to say, Steve? No, thank you. Cool. Hey, uh, Mark, I didn't round back on you, so I'm going to keep the order and uh mark tell me about what you've been doing since we last spoke to you <laughs> that i think you can remember uh no this was actually my second time here and um as i said last time was uh, i was a child of the z80 um having built a tech one uh and therefore anything to do with the z80 and kind of um yeah I, i'm on a collecting spree of z80 machines even ones that i didn't have back in the back in the day, because I, I don't think MSX machines were really all that popular back in um, in Australia kind of thing. So this was probably the first one that I got. This one was from Japan, a hit bit, um, what is it, a HB uh, F5. I got this one in from Japan, not a bad price actually. Um, I'm still retrobriting some of the keys. I did, I did the main keyboard, 
retro broke the uh, main keyboard, but these then started looking pretty yellow. So these were difficult to remove, but so I've got to retro bite those ones. Um, but to be honest, it's still um, 110 volts and opening it up inside to change it over, all the power conversion is all on the main motherboard kind of thing. So to convert it away from uh, 110 volts would be a little bit of a pain in the backside. Um, so I'm probably going to be selling this one um, because um, another, we, the, I think this is a dream, the dream MSX machine, MSX machine too. Um, I got this one in from uh, Spain, I think, Spain. Um, this is the uh, Philips one and it is um, in fantastic condition. It actually has a, uh, you know, a, a floppy disk on the side. It's got the, you know, really nice keyboard layout. Um, fires up at the, the um, SCART actually works through to um, a composite video kind of thing. So it's actually a really uh, beautiful machine. Only the space bar might, might need some retro writing. Um, and like the amount of manuals that it came with was just fantastic. So including all the manuals. Now, the only problem though, is that absolutely all the documentation, I don't know if you can see it there, but um, absolutely all the documentation is all in, um, uh dutch um uh, and there is nothing oh uh, got some even got some magazines they they were they were big the, the msx machines were huge over in europe um so and I've, I've scoured the internet and i can find manuals in french italian um french italian one other one one other european thing and dutch does not e exist in english they, they basically msx1 machines had some grounding in the uk like the toshiba was a hx10 but most of the msx2 stuff was really like the netherlands was the big one yep. um, yeah um yeah the msx2 just didn't really it was too late um to make it inroads into the uk you know that's a shame was, it was pretty yeah. much commodore spectrum amstrad yeah um, and then the 16 bits um, that, that's the frustrating thing that there's no english documentation but the machine is beautiful i think it's I, a, a, I've got the, the, the model before that, All right. um, the VG8235, which is similar, which oh, yeah. is basically the same hardware. Yep. But the keyboard is like, the keyboard is movable. So it's not quite as nice as what the keyboard is on ah, that. Basically, okay. it's like this little tray, you can unclip it and then bend it up. No, oh, okay. But it's basically the same spec as that, except that yours has the 720K floppy natively. Yes. Whereas mine had it modified because it was originally just single-sided three and a half inch like the early atari sts right okay um, but yeah that's a it's a damn good machine I'm, I'm jealous you've got that i was hoping when i was hunting um i was trying to hope to hunt one of those down but i could only get the the predecessor which which is fine and the good thing is that it uses 240 or yeah. 220 240 volts kind of thing so you don't have to do any kind of you know conversions whatsoever so uh, that that one yeah oh it even came with a dust cover i mean it was it was really beautiful condition kind of thing so just the only thing is the manuals being not being english is a bit frustrating and and trying to find technical information is all very difficult as well um you know not in english kind of thing so difficult and the last thing for this i think this is the last thing for the month um was my uh amstrad nc uh nc 100 um complete with a little case and documentation and everything else like that so absolutely stoked i've been looking for one of these for a bit of a while so well a month um, and if finally one popped up and it wasn't a bad price either. So I, I got a pretty good off eBay um, and an Australian seller as well. So I didn't have to import it from the UK, which is usually what you have to do for these things. Um, so I'll be tinkering with that as well. Um, and I've, I'll show you this next month. Next thing is I actually found, finally found a CPC 6128 plus with, Ooh. with a monitor. Now I can, my wife is in earshot, so I'm not going to say how much it cost me to ship. <laughs> yes, yes darling. <laughs> you're not getting. You're not getting the CPC. I love um, that you responded. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll show that one next month. Um, but I'm really, really super keen to uh, get that in. So, so that was the wins. The negative. The 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 losses. This. Uh, month or this month is I started I, I was re um, restoring a uh, standard spectrum ZX spectrum um, recapped it all uh, everything was really nice I needed a new uh, keyboard membrane got that in from the UK um, about to flick it over um, 
flip it over. You know, did all the washing of the rubber bits and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. But there was a little bit of um, residue on the plastic. And then, of course, stupid me, I got out the acetone and started, you know, oh. kind of. And, um, yeah, let me tell you, it only when it, it kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but it started shining things up. And I'm going, hang on, it's not supposed to do that. And why is the, the rag that I'm taking away all looking black kind of thing? I've never heard of black, um, you know, sticky stuff. But anyway, I woke up to it without doing too much damage to it, but rather annoyed at myself. And I, I did put up some posts up on the, on the forum, on the Facebook page and admitted my stupidity. So, so well, don't they do of... reproduction cases for them now? Yeah. Yeah, yes. they do. Yeah. Yeah. Probably might be an idea, actually. And they're not too expensive, are they? No. Nah. 25 pounds or something. Oh, that's okay. There's, mm. um, there's a stunning white. Oh, I think that, yeah. I think that was. Um... Oh, sorry. Are they good, the reproduction cases? Yeah, they, they get they're great reviews. I was looking at one as like, um, it's. Um, it's not pristinely white, but it's a white one with the with the the Sinclair um the the uh, the uh, the rainbow logo. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a story to tell you about the Amstrad NC one hundred notebook. Is it NC one hundred or NC two hundred? You've got there. One hundred. So uh, I bought some software. This must be nineteen ninety three. I used to buy software from computer stores, and I filled out the Aussie Soft registration card, posted it off. I got a phone call from a local computer shop. Congratulations, Anthony. You've won a laptop. I got really excited. Went down there. I got one of those. <laughs> I was so devastated. I hated that thing. And really? I, one again. I think it's so cool. <laughs> well, I wanted a laptop. You know, they had like uh, 386, 486 laptops in those days. All right, and, fair uh, enough. I yeah. got an Amstrad NC100. I didn't want it. Sorry. No. No. I, what, I, what I'm planning to do, what I'm looking forward to do, or you know, going to tinker with, is that on the back of them, there's a little slot there that you can take out and you can access the ROM from it, which means you can pull it out and make it do whatever you want it to. Which is, I, I want to put it on tinker with um, making some my, my own software. A um, uh, um, what is it? A um. Uh, I've forgotten a compiler, uh, basically oh, wow, cool. a, a compiler for it. So, uh, um, but yeah, so that's that's what I want to do with it. But that, that's the main reason, so that it's nice and simple. It's all got a little screen, kind of. It's I consider it like a basically upgraded Tech One with a keyboard and a bigger screen kind of thing. So that's why that's the main thing that I want to play with it. But yeah, so that's my month. Awesome. All right, where are we at? I was going to go with Rob, but he's disappeared. So let's go with Nigel. Tell us what you've been doing. Uh, not a lot on the retro computer scene other than trying to clear my doubles and, um, and actually sorting gear. Um, yeah, going through, well, I think, six 100-litre um, uh, tubs of cables and trying to sort them and, yeah, things like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, tested out my um, Apple II finally as well, uh, uh, Apple II Platinum. That's bought that about two years ago um looks nice like turn around there, Nigel. two years oh you know i've got a little bit of a backlog of gear hey you know it's just um we all do <laughs> yeah yeah I, I pulled out i thought oh i've got to I, mean, I was sorting out all the tubs of gear and i went oh hang on what's in that tub and it was all my um apple II gear so i was installed all the cards and that and tested the um the drive to floppy drive on it and i think the controller's gone on that or something i'm not too sure that's an, for another day but I, the next project is to work out if i can get color out of the platinums or not yep I you really... can they're ntsc oh, okay. they're generally ntsc color but you definitely get color out of them yeah so I don't mind, need... I, i've got heaps of spare parts for twos uh, so if you yeah. need anything i'm more than happy just to post it to you Oh, I haven't used it too since I was in primary school, what, um, 30 years ago or something, or <laughs> more, be more than 30 years ago. So, yeah, that's, this is a bit of a learning curve for me on that. But if you want um, to have a, a bit of fun, contact David Mutimer. He's in the group. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Got okay. the boot, he's got the booty card. He's one of the yeah. designers of it. And uh, put um, Total Replay on a USB stick, and bang, you've got all the great games on a USB stick. You don't need a disk drive. Away you go. It okay, costs you yeah. about 50 to 100 bucks. 
Yeah, I've got a lot of floppies here, so I wouldn't mind getting a disk drive working at some stage, but it's not, you know, and I've got an Apple IIc as well that um, I have oh, cool. um, yet to test, actually. <laughs> I bought that about two and a half years ago. <laughs> the plus side is with the Apple II and the IIc is they're pretty tough. Uh, yeah. They, gen- not much really goes wrong with those things. No. Yeah, I might actually um, pull out my micro B uh, this month and remove the reefer caps in that and give that a try after buying that a bit what, 18 months ago as well, I think. So, um, yeah, like I said, I do have a bit of a backlog of gear to, to work through. So was it, a, yeah. was, it a, was it a platinum that you've got, Nigel, or is it a... Yeah, just yeah a, platinum, yeah. Don't, don't they run a slightly different um, video output? They're okay on mono, but you've got to change the crystal to um, get it depends. the proper color. It depends which one you get. So okay. most, of the, most of the platinums are international NTSCs. Yeah, uh, right. is that what it says inside international NTS? Yeah. yeah 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 so and generally speaking the apple composite colors are all just ntsc monitors and you just whack it in so you don't have a genuine apple monitor no no but i have several um ntsc monitors though so any ntsc any ntsc monitor. model will work okay, just whack it in a composite yeah. and you'll get your color uh, okay well yeah i won't worry about it then i'll just do it that way yeah that's yeah. fine cool cool um, um that just vintage audio i think is my other thing because it's like yeah others here i collect vintage audio as well i've been trying to clear the massive backlog of that gear as well that i've got um yeah so it, that's the that's my main focus at the moment is clearing out my doubles and stuff i'm not going to use and before i start buying any more it's just um mm, yeah. okay no nothing too exciting cool um, there's one thing I know that Stevens disappeared, but I don't know if you recall, but about three to four months ago, he mentioned that he was going to desolder uh, uh, an Amiga 1200 keyboard interface ribbon cable or something. And I was just wondering how he was going with that. I think he's got that yeah. all fixed up now. Yeah. Um, it last took him a w- <clears throat> yeah, last time on. we met, you remember last time I met, I had it in my hand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got it off. That's as far as I've gone. So. <laughs> I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it decapped and put it into storage. I think, and uh, maybe re- put the caps in, in in the future. Okay, cool. So we'll call that abandoned. Yeah. So <laughs> I think so. You can call it abandoned. Right, Rob. Fixed to the point of broken. That's good. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Rob Caporetto, you are next. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, last two months there's not really been much. Um, I spent a bunch of July, uh, sick. So that really just put a crimper on. Um, a lot of things. Um, obviously, it was that. Um, so the last few weeks, there's been a bunch of things uh, that have come through. One is probably a little sentimental, but it's the sort of updated edition of Usboard's computer space games. Did you say the, updated? Yeah. So the big thing is, I'll bring it up to the camera. So the original version of the book didn't support the Commodore 64 or the Acorn Electron. Um, so this version of the book, well, for the Electron, it's basically no changes, but there's one of the games in there, which is graphical <laughs> and cool. they actually, and the, in the original edition of the book, it had Vic 20, it just had the Vic 20. Um, and basically they updated the listing to have the, the necessary graphical tweaks for the C64. And do you mean when they updated it, you mean like a 1984 update or do you mean like a 2022 update? Um, I think like 1983, oh, the, the original copyright um it's still breaking news guys breaking news yeah um the original copyrights it's still got the original 1982 copyrights is when it came out originally um i think it was like a second like a later printing because there's yeah um because there was like there's the sequel book which is computer battle games um and what have I've you got, got the... uh, so brad i see that you've got one and i see that you've got one as well david does yours just yeah. hold this up on the screen are they are they like the which versions of those ones? Those David's got the second. Yeah, they're yeah, the we, second we, edition as well. But the well, update... that came that, that came with my Vic twenty back in the day. Ah, oh, nice. Oh wow, cool. Yeah, mine's got nineteen eighty four on the back. Oh wow. But then I oh yeah, it's still yeah. got twelve. It's got the nineteen eighty two copyright. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah there yeah. we go. Yeah, back cover twelve eighty four as well. So there we go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that's, that's the one. That's the sentimental one. Um, and then there were a couple of. Bond book. So the first one is Shareway Heroes, which is was a book that was kickstarted, or crowdfunded on Unbound a little while ago. It's written by a chap. The author's based in Melbourne. Um, huh. 
and it's basically sort of a lot of stuff about the growth of sh- the shareware distribution model for like PC, Mac, and that era of software. I'm a few chapters in, and it, it's a really good read. Um, if you're sort of interested in that historical side, like he's looking at, uh, he's been like interviewing people who worked on some of the very first PC shareware programs, sort of like charted how the movement started and where it's going. Um, like I said, it's it's been a really good read so far. I like my history stuff. Um, those of you know, and the last hey one- Rob, just. To, just with that, when you're talking about shareware, I recently listened to a YouTube, um, uh, I don't know, podcast documentary type thing about the history of shareware, and it had a lot, a lot to do with like id software. Have you heard much about that? Yeah. So the, where I'm up to so far is been um, just leading up to when id s- split away from soft disk and joined up with Apogee to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Hell where awesome. I'm up to right now. Um, because like looking at the the thing, there's sort of um, where are we? There's where I am is there's the chapters are an experiment in economics, copy that floppy, pizza and beer <laughs> money, uh, licenseware, the apogee model, um, invasion of the border cons, which is you know the first Commander Keen, uh, epic mega games, uh, oh, yeah. experimental experiential weirdness, ideas from the deep, maelstrom, do shareware edition pretty good shareware and fade out of the chapters um so yeah it's it's a really good read it's what it maybe it's pretty thick 300 300 300 odd pages um what'd you pay for it rob uh i it was quite a while ago that i backed it but doesn't have the pricing problem and because it was a crowdfund i have to check my emails um so it doesn't have like it doesn't because the way unbound kickstarter um, a service called Unbound. Unbound. Um, yeah. So Never basically, heard. they um, do basically what they do is they work with authors. They do like a Kickstarter style crowdfund. And um, what happens is the people who back the books get like a special, uh, a nicer, like hardcover edition. And then, then it goes off to general, general mass distribution as a paperback. So if you don't mind me asking, how did you find out about this book and how did you find out about Unbound? So I found about Unbound years ago because um, another author did that. I knew about that because the author, Richard Moss, has written another really good book called The Secret History of Mac Gaming, which is um, which just got a revised edition that came out through Bitmap Books. And that's basically a similar kind of thing, but through gaming on the Macintosh, like the classic era Macintosh, or, you know, black and white, that. And that is an amazing read as well. It's a lot of, like, retrospectives and interviews with authors who wrote games on the Macintosh in that era. Um, that is also highly recommended. $31. Uh, Michael's just found it on the internet. You can pre-order the paperback for $31. Which, yeah, I think is it's a good read. And Available course, 18th of August, which is in four days, which is great. Yeah. And again, it's an Australian author, and I think that's you know, really important to support because Australia's voice isn't really out there much in a lot of the, the history retrospective stuff. Um, so very highly recommended um <laughs> other than that yeah i there's a few things i tried to bid on and, and got out bid on like um an english manual for the sc3000 basic cartridge um because that to complete my copy um there was that massive listing of sc3000 stuff last month and i got out bid on that um that was crazy how much all that stuff went for because i yeah. i've got an sc3000 which i would have liked some bits for but no way. What did the yeah. monitor go for? Like 900 bucks or something? The manual. Oh, well. Like, if you want yeah. to complete your collection and you want to get yeah. it, you pay what you pay. Yeah. It was just a little higher for what was just the manual. So, um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I've been just tinkering with the 60, the 64, doing a, a 40th and a, you know, 40th birthday video, just like, which probably just going to be waffly because it's 2022 and I feel very weird about things. Um, there is a cool um, C64 bundle, celebratory bundle that is, um, there's got a bunch of games, uh, a bunch of copies of um, um, some some other bits and pieces. Um, let me grab the link. It's a pay what you want thing with money going to, to charity. Um, so I'll throw that. It's like you basically pay 10 bucks US. Uh, oops everyone there we go i just threw the the link for that in the chat 
yeah, you get a bunch of like modern modern games um, developed for the machine. You get a few other bits and pieces, um, some cool bits, and yeah, it goes to charity if you want to you know, help celebrate the 40th birthday of one of the the more iconic 8-bit micros out there. Cool, very good. I'd, I'd just like to quickly mention for anyone who doesn't know that those Osborne um, programming manuals are actually available for free online. They have them um, publicly available and you can legally download them. And That's cool. Keep. Yeah, Chris Wilkins or someone promoted it, didn't he? Nigel. I think his name's Chris Wilkins or that. It was yeah. with a bunch of other e-books. I got all the Osborne ones plus the... Um, the one about the Oliver twins and Ocean and the story of Commodore 64 and a bunch of other ones as well. They're all for free. Cool. Very good. And uh, you can just get them from the uh, website of Osborne or is there um, another place? Yeah. No, it was somewhere else. I'm, if I can find it, I'll drop the link in either on Facebook or on here. But uh, yeah, all the Osborne ones were there. And then there was also a bunch of the ones about the history behind ocean, as I said, and the Oliver twins and um, a bunch of those sort of ones as well. Cool. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Osborne actually has some on their side as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, is that it, Rob? Yeah, that's pretty much all for me. Cool. Someone we haven't heard from for a very long time, Stuart Bunning. Tell us what you've been doing. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so what have I been doing? I've been forgetting to uh, come to these meetings. <laughs> um, I've got a few things. I bought a Apple II Euro Plus recently with two Ooh. floppies. Um, and I don't know much about them, but I know they're supposed to be, the Euro one's supposed to have PAL, I think, or am I wrong? It's, you are correct. It's yeah, the PAL yeah. Apple II Plus. That's what I thought. So I, I really wanted the PAL version. Um, uh, it, it, it turns on... Um, tries to boot off a floppy i don't have any floppies it goes straight into monitor because it's probably got like a bad ram or something so no, it goes into monitor at this oh yeah it's bad ram yeah yeah so 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 i start pulling the ram chips out and they're those um lovely um ceramic gold pinned chips and you know as you pull them out the pins break off <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's something you guys, they're a lot softer than the metal ones. So maybe because the uh, sockets were a bit corroded or something. So I've replaced a lot of those, but I had a few sockets that I've got to replace. And I bought a couple of these little things, which you guys might've seen, which come in handy. It's a little, um, basically a little uh, RAM tester. Oh yeah, cool. Um, which is handy. You stick it in and it powers off USB and uh, you just press a button and it sort of tells you if it's pass or fail, it does a whole heap of tests and stuff. So so I've been doing that, but yeah, there's a few, um, there's another chip. Um, it's a, there's a bad socket. I push, I, I push on it and it comes good and sometimes it doesn't. So I think there's a few problems with some sockets, unfortunately. Um, it's got one fault broken key on the keyboard. And if you guys are familiar with Apple II, um, it's the two piece keyboard. Um, so the stem had broken, but I glued it back on, but it, it almost looks like they're not, overly easy to repair these keyboards because they're not individual key switches. They're all, they seem to be a um, bit of a different beast than what I'm used to. Yeah, I haven't repaired. I can tell you that the Platinum keyboards are easy, but I've never tr attempted a repair of a Euro Plus keyboard, so I can't help you there. Yeah, so it's got the uh, it's got 80 column card. It's got um, the language card, um, two floppies. Um, so yeah, that was that was all right. Um, I've, I've mucked around with that a bit, but um, Got a bit pissed off when you know I made it worse by <laughs> pulling out RAM chips that were probably okay, and then the pins had broken off them, so it was worse. So, but anyway, I'll, I'll um I'll continue with that. Um, what else? What else did I find? Um, I got uh, funnily enough, I was just going for a junk shop, and I and I, I found some paper, some um, tractor feed paper, Viking computer Viking paper. office supplies. Oh my god! And what's wow. funny is I, I did a bit of research on that because it's got it, it, it it's it's old but it's got a website on it vikingop.com that They were amazing. They used to have this amazing catalog they used to ship out. And I used to love looking in Viking catalogs. Yeah. They were bought out by um, um uh, Corporate Express? No, who, who's who's the um who's Office the Works? Office Works. Yeah, Office, Office Works. Works so, yeah. yeah, because I actually went to Ar um to archive.org and I um uh, I just kept looking until I, you know, wanted to see some information, and then uh, you click on the link and it redirects you to Office Works. It's either that or they bought the domain name. But anyway, that was uh, no, they bought them out. They did buy them out. Yeah, there you go. But, 
But um, no, it was quite funny because I look at it and I'm like, why is there a website on this uh, box for selling tractor feed paper? <laughs> I'm like, was the internet around when people were still using printers <laughs> with that tractor feed? But, you know, as you guys might know, they even sometimes use it at the airport still for, for printing out manifests and stuff. So Yeah, I think you can still buy new tractor feed. Yeah, Office yeah, Office still sells it. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I can tell that. you that no paper manufacturer in Australia still makes tractor feed products. Yeah. So that's good. Um, yeah, you saw me look at that before. I showed that up before. I've got a, I've got a couple of uh, IBM, you know, the go golf balls. I just I just thought they were really cool. So I've got a couple of those. Not that I, well, I I'm going to throw this in here. I mm. also bought something IBM, Stuart, you might appreciate. Yeah. Um, these were on eBay. There's a badge that says, I love my IBM personal computer. Oh. And here's another one that says, IBM's most powerful personal computer yet, the IBM PCAT. Yep. Very good. Yes, no, I, I, I like that stuff. So you, you, I would have probably got it too if I saw it, but um, there's always something to buy. Um, a few other things. I know a lot of you guys aren't overly interested in the S100 stuff, but I've, I've got a few more cards for me, for IMSI, some more, um, some IO cards, because I want to be able to control some stuff externally. So some relay output card and a, um, another graphics card. So I've probably got about five or six different graphics cards. So I want to just get all my vintage crts and just like you know put stuff on them just for fun <laughs> cool so, but uh yeah all, all keeping them in, in the um sort of the late 70s sort of era um got a couple of extra cards for the um for the apple twos like a serial card and stuff even though the thing's not working yet but other than that well it works it comes up and well actually what i did too which really pisses me off is um when I pulled it apart and check everything out, when I put it back together, I swear I knew which way the keyboard connector went in and I plugged mm. it in upside down. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the pin out of what it does, it puts minus 12 volts on the output of the TTL chip. So it blew up one chip on the um, keyboard, which is just, it's not the microcontroller itself. It's, there's a 40 pin chip in there. It's just a, like a 74 LSO2 or something. So, um, when I put it in back to front, the, the, the light didn't come on and I put it back again. And then I worked out a whole heap of keys wouldn't work. And then when I had a look at the circuit, I worked out one of the bits, which bit I blew up. And that's why those keys don't work. So, but, uh, well, that's, you live and learn. It's because I'm getting old and I didn't need glasses on and I didn't see the little dot for the zero on the, you know, the pin one on the, on the connector and I put it in upside down. But I would have, I would have hoped that, um, not all the pins are used. So they could have wired it in a way that it didn't blow anything up when you put it in back to front. I like, I like it when that's the case, but not in this case. So. Sorry, Stuart. Yeah. They weren't thinking of you. Yeah. Well. Lots, lots of manufacturers have um, done that deck, have a very nasty habit of um, not labeling pin one of their connectors within their PDP 11 gear. And um, if you look at the Exidy Sorcerer, um, the ROM card edge connector, when someone mushes a ROM cartridge in really hard and they bend a whole pile of pins together, mm -hmm. on the top side you've got address 12 and on the, uh, on, the, on the other, sorry, address 13, and on the bottom side you've got 12 volts, so party over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably straight, probably cook your CPU, it's probably not even buffered. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's what uh, that's what happened with uh, with one of my TRS eighty model ones. I think when I bought it, it was um, looked like something had been plugged in upside down because there was just one bit that was just every chip that went to address twelve or whatever bit it was. It was just um, cooked it. But um, yeah, so um, that's probably it. Just looking around if there's anything else I've got. But yeah, there was um, a few bit. I wanna. I was trying to get desperately wanted to get an original Imzai keyboard for my Imzai, but. Uh, two of them sold recently. One of them went for thirteen hundred bucks, and one of them went for two thousand dollars just for the keyboard. And I'm like, bloody hell! Um, and the dual floppy um, set up, the dual eight inch floppy. I think it went for something like six, six or seven thousand. <laughs> I mean, I only paid three thousand for my M's I mean, that, which I thought was enough. But the the, flop, the dual floppies are going for more than the bloody the computer. Um, that stuff doesn't exist anymore. It's literally gone. I know, but you can you can buy Imzai's come up for sale more often than the floppy drives do. Obviously, they made a heap more Imzai's than floppies, I guess. But, mm. um, I'd seen a few in the past and they were a bit expensive and I thought, oh, no, maybe I'll wait. I should have got them because they're just 
some of the, I don't know if you guys agree, some some things recently, I reckon the last couple of years have just gone through the roof. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really like double, triple. System. I'd say 2018 to 2022 has been like exponential growth. And and I expected the coronavirus lockdowns and everything and people not being able to work in Victoria that, that things would have gone down because people would have been not working and gone, oh, I, I need some cash. I'll just I'll offload some of my some of my collection of bits and pieces, but the exact opposite happened. Absolutely. With everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I'm a bit of an IBM fan, like old IBM stuff. And um, I wanted to get an IBM 50, 5100, which is oh, you wow. know, before the PC. It's like an all wonderful thing with this little screen in it. Um, you know, and a couple of years ago, they were like, I, I kept seeing them for around three, four grand. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe one day. And then, and then I, Hadn't seen any for a while. The last one I saw went for, I think, $13,000. And I'm like, oh, forget it's it. It's a bargain. Why well, like, wouldn't you buy it? It's practical. You could use well, it. Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. If you bought it for three grand a couple of years ago and I could have played with it and sold it for 12 grand, I mean, it's just like, who's, it's, I think there's an Apple One. Um, I don't know if it's sold yet, but there's an Apple One <laughs> circuit board, the one that was all cut up half cut in half and stuff prototype and it was going for like half a million or something crazy it's just ridiculous it really is ridiculous and you can get the clone i mean if you're really uh, i guess people are just trying to be completists and uh it's what unlimited money printing does yeah when you have unlimited money printing there's a lot of money out there asset inflation has just gone through the roof normal day-to-day stuff is what six seven percent whatever they claiming it is but asset inflation, all the all the all the things that you actually want to own and buy, like yeah, property and that and yeah, collectibles, mm. 20, 30 percent a year. Yeah. Although some could argue that some collectibles are, I mean, uh, Pat Learning Fund one and two boxed. I mean, uh, no one wants to pay eight thousand dollars for a Intellivision cartridge that you're never going to play. <laughs> You've got, you got to be careful of the Beanie Babies effect as well. Like <laughs> people buying it because it's worth money and it's definitely going to be worth more in the future. So there's probably a bit of that going on right now from people who actually don't give a crap about retro computers. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, anything else, Stuart? Uh, no, not really. Um, not, 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 uh, no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm into a bit of, you know, vintage, anything vintage, whether it's audio, vintage cars, audio, um, video, furniture, <laughs> that's the stuff. So, yeah, just like to have everything around the sort of, I don't know, 70s and 80s sort of stuff. So, Cool. Yeah. Cameron. Howdy. Can you hear me okay? Tell me all about what you've been doing. <laughs> um. You probably saw on Facebook that I stumbled across like a mass grave of retro goodness at a skip bin. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but I was pulling all the uh, Oz Vintage people in to get all the stuff that I couldn't take because there was just so much of it. Um, yeah, Can I share my screen? It's probably easier. Uh, one moment, please. <clears throat> oh, you got to turn now you moment. may begin. All right, let's have a look. So let's uh, let's look at the horror that is what I found. Can you see that? Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. So a hey, very obs- where yeah. was this located? Did Western I suburbs. See Melbourne. Yeah. Okay. It's well, always I, Melbourne. Is it possible that I saw that teletype unit there today in James's hands? Maybe. Like there, there was. I started a chat of people who. What, who could come out and grab stuff that I couldn't grab, and there was probably twenty of us. So you'll I'm see. I'm pretty sure I saw that digital. I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw that um, today. I had yeah, that yes. in my hands. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I, I, yes, I can't remember who took what, but there was a yeah, James lot of Plummer stuff. picked that up. Yep. But as far as I know, the it's a uh, just rubbish removalist guy who put an obscure gum tree ad up, and no one really found it until it was too late, until everything was in the skip bin. But I. I found it and apparently their family just, you know, he, the guy who had it all uh, went into a home and they just chucked it all. Oh, wow. Why so the, do that? the rubbish That's removalist cool. guy thought this has got to be something. This has got to be worth something. So thankfully, like he didn't have a clue, but he's into uh, 
retro cars and stuff. So he he had some idea that someone would be interested. So thankfully he did, but it was it was a uh, it was like that. It was just everything just. Can tossed you show in. us the, the blue one in the chassis? It looks like an S one hundred system. Yes, that one so, there. I thought you'd be interested in these because I I grabbed oh, these. Oh, yeah, these. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, these, that these. is so cool. These now, that really is a full skip bin of stuff. A full. It's, it's a full skip bin of stuff. So, mm. so how did I miss this post? It was wasn't. Yeah, I didn't see well, it. It wasn't well labeled. The pictures just looked like a bunch of old VGA monitors and printers. No wonder no one bothered to look at it because it looked like a pile of rubbish. But I did see. Buried in amongst all the other stuff, um, just in the corner of the picture, and it's oh, the new TPC. Wow. Yeah. Did, did you get that? Yes, I did. There were, oh, that, oh, did yeah, I see that last thousands. weekend? Yes. Yeah, so I took it to the oh. retro um, yes. meetup. I thought I saw that. So I got the CPU card, the RAM card, the IO card. I'm just reforming the caps and stuff. In this I picture. just watched the video of a guy that yeah. um, did a review on one of those. Just Adrian. Like, Ad Adrian Black. Adrian got Black. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got one. There's another guy that's got the whole set of this stuff. But, yeah, no, so this is a – I thought, okay, well, that's a thing. And then I got there. I was like, what the living hell? Um, yeah, so the Sphere. That is Southwest 6800. That's probably worth about three grand, I think. Yeah, it was like six Jesus. months. It was like one of the – Along with the Altair, it was like six months after the Altair. Um, wow. But it's the 6800 version of that. Don't tell me there's an Altair as well, is there? What else is so, in the skip? What else uh, is in the skip? Show us what like, else is in the skip. So the Sphere computer, right? That's um, cool. That is cool. But Stuart might have some clue, but there is only one mention of Sphere computers. It's considered to be the first home computer ever, but it's not this one. This oh. one is a Mark II Sphere computer, which isn't on the internet anywhere. And the only mention of it is an ad from Sphere One saying, "Look, keep a lookout for the Mark II." That's the you have, only do you reference. do you have this, Cameron? Yeah, I've got two of them. Wow! Oh, Open those. Got a photo of it in the inside? Uh, no, not on me. But this is this is from the. I was literally pulling, you know, old bikes and stuff off all this stuff, and it was What's all. That's a, a big eight-inch floppy. There's above. two eight-inch drives there. What's that? Oh yeah, I've got like six eight inch floppies that are all brand new and you know i'll be offering this stuff up soon has, it, has it's, all it's, of this been collected because you just yes you just described the single event that scares the crap out of this oh yeah that, yeah this is horrifying that, that, you know i'll die and like 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 you just you just put my study on the screen <laughs> yeah, and i've no, gone no. shit <laughs> with this what is that's that? Is that That's Tona. That's Tona. That's an IBM 5153, which is tragic. <laughs> I really wanted a CGA IBM. <laughs> but I did save a lot of it. Um, PS2 monitor there. Yeah. Oh, God. Nice big systems. Uh, Apri I thought that was an apricot monitor back there. There's the two, apricot. Two complete itself. apricots. Oh, yeah. I remember the apricot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Great keyboard. It's like nice and clicky. Big old PC. Some other people took them. Oh god! Some wacky stuff. So, so there's the fifty-one, fifty, um, fifty-three. Tragic. It's, uh, yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah, it's and the gigantic VGA monitors. Uh, I took that one. The Data General Terminal. Yeah, DJ Terminal, absolutely. That's yeah. a JX monitor. Go back oh, to that one. I'll show you what I got because um, that's a I JX took... monitor. A JX there. So this is this is my garage before I sorted it all. I sorted through it all. Oh, did you get the JX from there? What's inside that JX? I don't know. I've got so much stuff. This is only like a month ago. So I've got so much stuff. I I wouldn't know where to start. Um, so yeah, I've got a compact portable three, which tragically the screen was smashed on, um, <gasps> which is the whole point of the compact portable three because it's the mm -hmm. amber no. plasma screen. The plasma. Yeah. Two eight sixes, two fifty one fifties, two fifty one sixties, three fifty one seventies. Wow, cool. Did RGB, you know that the 5170 is the most powerful? Oh, it is. I knew <laughs> this that. This is all from one estate? Yep. What There's the a... Hell? Is that an AT&T? Uh, old, old Betty, old old Betty. Betty M, M24. There's the JX. That's an M24, absolutely. Yep, M24. I uh, didn't, couldn't find the keyboard. I hated those. <laughs> uh, there's a 5154, so that's pretty cool. An EGA uh, IBM. Uh, just just stuff like i got a gigantic box what's that thing Ooh. under the keyboard there 
That's a Ingersoll RGB monitor. No, the thing, no, the black the thing, the keyboard, and the oh, that, that's the S- SWT. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Cool, so. yeah, so um, It was all bent up and everything. I, I straight. Did you end up with those? Yes. With the sixty eight hundred. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the. If that. you that's decide cool. that you're bored or bored with it, <laughs> I would be very interested. As would everyone else on on other lists. Hey, yeah. so, someone's got to say it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he had there was all sorts of like testing equipment and shit there. So other radio guys came. He was a ham guy as well. Jesus. I wonder who this guy was. I don't know. Uh, it's a real, it's a real, real tape deck. So there's a whole tape these deck. photos here. There's stuff you didn't take. No, but yeah. I contacted all for all the computery stuff. I got about twenty of us guys to come and pick it up. All the radio stuff was other people, and the guy did sell some of it separately, but most of it he just wanted scrap for. Oh, so okay. did you actually have to pay for it, or you they said scrap prices? Oh, okay. But yeah. for all this stuff, it was like five hundred dollars total. Oh, um, but so everybody, what's those yellow things there, Steph? Everybody, have a chat with your partners now <laughs> and yeah. tell them what to do with your stuff. Don't have a chat. Buy. Don't have a chat. Um, Put it in your will. Put it in your will. I've got a document oh, that right. I share with my sisters about who to contact to sell all my stuff <laughs> in case I drop dead. Yeah. Um, because I very nearly did drop dead recently. So that was like, oh shit, I better like write up a will and stuff. So yeah, yeah I've got a full a Google document. I've got a full, um, fully categorized all my stuff. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. What works, what doesn't, where it is, Tasmania, whatever. Um, and names of people to contact because your family's not going to give a shit about this. They're just going to like sell it all in one go. Yeah, but, but if they can contact people and say, if you take all this stuff, you can sell it and just give us half of what it's oh, worth. Oh, MZ700, how cool. Oh, yeah, I've got stuff everywhere. It's quite yeah. insane. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my, I've, I've, I've had a heart attack myself. I've got eight stents in my heart. And Jesus. my brother, who's almost as big a collector as myself, has um, had a quintuple bypass. So, Well, I've got a pacemaker, um, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're in the same boat where we're sort of like, um, yeah, we're going to have to start cataloging this stuff and actually making sure people know what's there you know yeah yeah, yeah I, did, I i like cataloging stuff so it's not really a problem how like, is it that you have three in televisions and none of them work because they're dodgy apparently oh my goodness <laughs> but they're in good condition so they look good that's just the, the look of it so <laughs> one of them works uh I'll, the other ones i'll have you add me vectrex i got a few vectrexes um Actually, if you you know if anyone cares, I'll just post it in the chat. Yeah, so um, that sort of what's the, what was the brand of those uh, eight inch floppies? You know, the I'll show you. Like, um, so, so this is all just in a big case, yeah, mm. a big box of five and a quarters, and like little those little speakers, some text. Um, what have we got? Just lots of clone two eight sixes. Uh, new yeah. in box, a mono PS two monitor. No way, new in box. Yeah, it's still in plastic. I don't, I, maybe it's not new, but I mean, it looks good. Uh, the two sphere computers are slightly different colors, even though they are identical. So there's the, there you go. There's the, um, hang on. There's the eight inch floppies. Eight inch I, floppy, noticed, I noticed there was some floppy. inside, like a very dark grayish sort of case. Maybe you didn't get those. So there you go, um, Stuart. There's the is Stuart Silly. A Canbrook modem. Canbrook <laughs> yeah, modem. I had to get that. Oh, yeah. Oh, they made them. So that, there's a Canbrook PC as well. Oh my! I had to get the matching modem. Uh, so this is the Sphere PC here. One of them's got a PCU. I think they're identical. I don't think they're two parts of the same system. I think they're just separate. So there you go. For those playing alone at home, as they say. Oh, we uh, are playing alone. Didn't the Australia? Okay. Look at that. Yeah, that's Didn't the thing. It's Australian made. That's a good oh, one. Or, uh, yeah. Made in Sydney. I actually, I got a couple of boxes of magazines from a, a junk shop the other day, and old electronics magazines. And I'm surprised how many um, for the S100 stuff. There was tons of companies in Australia that actually made computer stuff, and you just don't yeah. see it anymore. Um, what well, is that? Is that S100? The Sphere? I'm not sure to be honest, because yeah. as you said, you can't find much information on it. I've seen no. pictures in uh, magazines on it, but that's about it. Is the poor old, uh, poor old Apricot systems? Jeez. No um, keyboard. Yeah, no, I got the keyboards, thankfully. Uh, that that Fujitsu dot matrix might be of interest to me to go with my Fujitsu. That's just the box, com. unfortunately. Oh, yeah. oh okay. And what's in the box is just endless 386 motherboards. 
<laughs> I, got, I reckon I've got 43 out of six motherboards. It's what everybody oh, needs. Oh, That's not no. enough. Half of them with batteries oh, that have exploded. That, I love my 3 out of 6. 3 out of 6 is a great fun. What's they're, that pile of garbage there? The pile of garbage is the remains of a 5151 <laughs> and a 5153. Uh, in the skip bin, the, the tubes were were cracked. I thought, well, that's yeah. that's annoying because I would have taken the tubes. So I just but pulled I, all the electronics 51, out. 53, that's the EGA monitor. That's the right? CGA one. 51, uh, 51 54. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. You're correct. So I figured, like, okay, well, I'll take the electronics and the buttons and the badges and at least I get something out of the goddamn tragedy. DHT so. tra transformer, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Um, uh, I took all the clicky keyboards. It was just a big pile of keyboards. So I took all the... Oh, you've got a million bucks there, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah the old... Clicky old... keyboards, hell yeah. Yeah, clicky <laughs> keyboards. Um, so lots of eight-inch drives. So obviously I don't yeah. need them, so I'll be offering them up soonish. A couple of PS2 colors monitors. I don't have a PS2, PS2 system, but I'll keep one of them. More eight-inch drives. Definitely Just... interested in some eight-inch floppies. I've got a couple, but... They're not so good. I want to see yeah. the back yeah. of that JX. I want to know if it's got any expansion cards in it. Yeah, like I've I'm I've been sorting it out recently, um, and that's why I took the SW2 TPC um, to the retro meetup. Um, yeah, like little compact laptops, uh, graphics tablets from from the oldie days. This must yeah. have been just before I joined the group because I reckon I reckon I've had a scene as I would have driven from the southeast side of Melbourne over to the west suburbs. Just well, it took this is two car loads full. Like when I, I got would there, it was have like, driven from Canberra. <laughs> it's going to take longer. Okay, than it's, one. it's <laughs> only eight hours. It's okay. <laughs> it's only eight hours. <laughs> but it was like agonising at the same this, time. This the one uh, on the left there with the the blue sphere with the. Yeah, that, that's the one. So that's what's that? Tektronic. Ah, so it's a it's a uh, floppy. No, that's a for Tektronic. That's a CPU emulator from RMIT. There you go. It's got two eight inches, and there you go. It's for developing um, sixty eight hundred and eighty eighty eight oh, wow. stuff. How interesting! Yeah, um, someone grabbed this. Th these this was like there you go eighty 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 right from RMIT. Someone grabbed this. I couldn't. This is like the weight of a collapsed yeah, sun. So yeah, I don't know what the hell was in it. But um, I think I saw that when it was posted. I think. Well, yeah, well, I think I, I think saw the posting about uh, come and get some stuff. I was too late. So. Yeah. No, he doesn't want that anymore. So um, I grabbed I a few nice you, IBMs. Um, I can tell you what is in it. About six billion TTLICs <laughs> and yeah, about right. 14, 14 trillion little tantalum capacitors. All waiting to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Look at all those oh, PS2 monitors. Yep. And PS2 a good looking monitor. IBM monitor there in the middle. Jake's monitor there. Uh, I grabbed that one. Yep. Nice good. compact power board there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's more radio stuff. X and there's the tragedy that I stumbled across. Across, like, uh, can you imagine? That's the Tetronic, just all shoved in a skip. Mm. So thankfully they're pretty tough. Um, this old stuff, as you know. Oh, was this um, was this everything, or had they already done another skip load already? Maybe. You're not sure. Half of it was in the skip, half of it was inside, and they yeah. was arbitrarily deciding what was worth keeping and what wasn't. Of course, they didn't not understand what they had. So some of the best stuff was smashed, and some of the crappiest stuff was inside. So and vice versa. So you know, you never know uh, what you're getting. I don't know what the hell that was. Um, well. You have uh, thoroughly depressed everybody on this. <laughs> but I did, I did save depressed. a buttload of it. And, Get uh, the crap out of this, actually. Oh, my goodness. And oh, why, does like, it always, why does this always happen in Melbourne? I've never <laughs> seen anything like this in Sydney. So the microbe guy was super excited to see this obscure little corner of a picture. It's a car. Goes, oh, my God. Can you get that monitor? Like, oh, it's all smashed up, dude. And he goes, no, I just want one particular part from it. And he was like, is that a tax? Is that a tax end, is it? Uh, no, it's a, like, K Targa. Cargo or something, yeah. right? He's like, yes, and he got the like the, the buyback, buyback or something. Or something. Yeah, he's, um, he's been after that for ages, ages, years and years and years, apparently. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's what I've been uh, sorting through. Um, you you got the data general? Is it just the terminal, the data general unit, or was it part of a computer? It's probably a terminal. No, it's its own terminal. Yeah. Um, so it's a full terminal on the back. There was another one that another guy took, and uh, that had fully burnt in. I'm screen, guessing so. in uh, no keyboard for the data general. 
No, but the SWTPC, yeah. oh, that's the remains of the 5153. <laughs> it's really very depressing. And the only thing <laughs> is just the badge. Um, I've got the remains of a... Yeah, so the uh, SWTPC, the, they had an old school sort of terminal keyboard module that probably would work with that. But um, there, there also was an SWTPC keyboard chassis, like a piece of metal with some power stuff on the back. It's all open. I thought, oh, that must be an incomplete thing. Yeah. I look in the catalog and that's the actual thing that you mount a keyboard onto. So There's uh, not a lot in that SW. TPC machine at all, actually. No, it's it's just it's a got a memory plane. card and a processor. Yeah, yeah, just a but serial, serial hey, IO. It's, it's better than zero. Yeah, and I'd say what's really funny is if you pull the card out of those things, it's not like a normal edge connector. It's like this big wide Molex connector sort of thing. And, and, yeah, and they are, and it yeah. takes about six billion pounds of pressure to pull the card okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no there's no support for them or anything. They're just flapping. It's just fifty. Yeah. The, I tell well, you what, wow. that's, that's that's a better connector than it's in my Fujitsu family. Oh, that's gold. That's yeah, that, that that thing is absolute nightmare. That it's got double heavy. rows. So oh. is that that's a serial out, I presume, to a terminal. It is a serial out, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And look, you you've just breached a whole a whole pile of Australian laws because that's porn right there. Okay, <laughs> simple as that. Look at the power supply, the the, the kick ass filter cap, that's beautiful. Yeah, look at it. Uh, and it still works. I, I reformed it and it's of, of course right? it will. Yeah. Of it will. Oh, did you actually yeah. get did you actually get data at the serial port, did you? Oh, I haven't really test I've just been reforming the caps okay. before I go and just turn it on willy nilly. Well there is definitely I know Adrian Adrian Digital Basement did it, but there's another and there's another guy on uh, YouTube that had done um who's got pretty much every single oh, read one for of the tech series. changes. Yep. Tangents does a lot of stuff on them. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So there, there you go. So like inside some of the IBMs. So one of them oh. has the co-processor, which is pretty awesome. Maybe 87. How yeah. cool are they? Yeah, like no, the I IBMs mean, are IBM in, stamped. Yeah. Oh, okay, pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, they're in very varying condition. Like a 5160 is totally like murdered with some battery acid or something. Uh, that's the 5150 board. Looks pretty clean. So I'm yep. just going through them, seeing what, and trying to collate a really nice 5150. With a hard drive in it. That's another thing. I I didn't get this from the other pile, so that, that's, that's lovely. That thing. I love right? it. Oh, plotter. plotter. So I bought this. Oh, awesome plotter. nice. So I've been fixing that up because um, I love I just love plotters, and this is the perfect size. So what I'm going to do because I'm setting up the red, helping uh, like a the retro section of packs. So if you come along to packs. Hanging out the retro section, it's awesome. They've got pinballs and arcade machines, and we set up all our old computers. I'm going to attempt before PAX to make a screenshot button for a Vetrex. <laughs> that's, that's going to be my project. Do you get it? Yeah. And it's going to print out on that. To really take a screenshot of a Vetrex. Print out on the plotter. Oh, yeah, oh that's gold. I'm oh, going to paste the analog input into an Jeez. Arduino and then send it to the plotter. I'm going to have, hopefully have that set up. The world's first way to take a screenshot of a Vetrex. I think wow. that's going to be freaking awesome. Is so, that using the Pytrex to do that? Yeah, like um, I don't have one, but I've got to in investigate. But I'm, I'm sure it's possible. Yeah, I I'm sure it is. I've got a Pytrex. Um, I'm yeah, sure. so do I. You'd happy, happy to lend it to you if you want it. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I've got to investigate what the best way to record the a screenshot would be. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what else have you got, Cameron? What else? Okay, there's one other thing that happened that I got, and that is that from a guy for a thousand dollars. Wow! Oh, kidding. Oh, what the five hundred six hundred? We like stop looking. That's an A three thousand and an A four thousand. Yeah, so I got a five hundred, six hundred, twelve hundred, two thousand, two thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, CDTV. A thousand for a grand for a thousand dollars. Did you rip him off? No, he he knew how much it was worth. And I said I had no idea he had that much when I got there. It's like, um, what? The, wh why? He was an old video producer, and so none wow. of the software at all was the games at all. It's all just video production. That's amazing. That is Two amazing. A five nineties as well. Yeah, for uh, the the hard drives, um, lots of. 
time-based correctors and gen locks. The so floppy drives and keyboards alone are worth more than that. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I didn't get a pregnant mouse for the 3000. So that's um, probably the only thing that I wanted from this pile. So I pretty much. <laughs> you should have, you just dropped the price. It's like, ah, oh, this, this bucks. sucks. Uh, the 3000 is pimped out with like 18 meg and the 25 meg. Wow. You, know about that. you did really well. Really, really well. That's insane. Um, that's so insane. I've been very busy uh, going through removing all the goddamn batteries um so one of the 2000s is definitely dead uh oh. one of them is repairable and the other one's good 3000 survived the 4000 had a coin cell already so that was awesome uh 1200 works the 600 doesn't so i got a fair bit of recapping to do look, look the batteries removing them is a good thing but the most important thing is removing those bloody reefer caps yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a things. whole pile of smoke. Smoke yeah. generated gone. Well, that's out of that old, old school monitor, and there's two of them in series, just tied to two legs. See? <laughs> so I don't know what the hell they're playing out there. Like this is in that in the monitor. This was tied together. Two legs are tied together, and the other two legs are going into the mainboard. That is weird. That's weird, right? <laughs> that's Caps in series doubles for the voltage and halves the capacitance, but yeah, why maybe they couldn't find a cap that they were right. obviously stuffed that day. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, well, I got to figure out what the rating is to replace it with. Um, so there you go. That's I, I my... replace them. I leave them out. I, I think I, it doesn't work without them. I think the mains is running through them. I don't. I don't think it's in parallel. But just normally look at it they are normally, normally they're, they're, normally they're in parallel right? normally they're yeah. in parallel so, yeah. so so as an as an amateur radio operator with the signal strength seven noise floor here um i literally don't bother replacing them because it yeah. doesn't change anything no normally it's a waste of time right like but um yeah this is me going through all the old motherboards in that box uh, a lot of them are stuffed, but uh, a lot of them are okay. So, ah, know, good. yeah, a lot of weird Corrosion ones. City. Yeah, well, that's the double Vata. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, uh, the gift that, that will keep damage. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, anyway. So, I'm cataloging that. So, I'll share this with people who want like yeah. old 8 bit cards and stuff because I'm just I'm just going through the box and writing down what, what it is. That's Hey Cameron, you know that big um, box of Amiga um, mice that you had in one of those previous slides? Yep. I think it was the mice. Was there any um, any of the um, tank mouse from the A one thousand in there? There's one. But that would that would be with the one thousand that you'd need it for. Uh, he said he says, "Oh, I've got a one thousand, but I can't find it." I'm like, oh, um, but <laughs> so that's a one thousand thing there, and there's a one thousand floppy. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately for you, Henry, um, I've got a 1,000 without the proper mouse, so I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah. I've got a, I've got the, um, I've got a bodged mouse, but um, yeah. it, the internals are um, the, not the optics. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's stuffed. The circuit board stuff. It's just so. not the same without the little right angled. Uh, That's thing. correct. Uh, any Amiga guys, right? So you know how the 600 mice are modern, okay? But they have a big left mouse button. This yeah. one is a Commodore mouse with evenly sized buttons, uh, which I've never ever seen before. So I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, I've, I've got one. Yeah. Evenly oh. sized left and right. Usually they're big. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. They're not common. Yeah. Okay. If you uh, if you need oh, spare parts for yeah, if you haven't looked at the A uh, A six hundred, if, if you um, need spare parts, I've got a donor uh, okay. motherboard um, for parts. Tom Walker. Most of you probably know Tom Walker from the groups. Yep. Yep. So um, I donated donated my uh, my motherboard to him um, for repairs stuff. So just in case if you ever need anything. Yeah, it is dead. So I'm just assuming it needs all this crap. Uh, a ones. lot of times that with the um, 600s, it's the 555 that goes on them right. and that put, keeps the reset stuck. And so you just need to replace the 555 and do a little bit of work around there and they fire yeah, up. Yeah, I figured it's not. It, it doesn't look bad, so I, uh, there's nothing permanent bad with it. Uh, unfortunately, 2000 zone came with one keyboard, which is a little annoying, hence why I got one off David recently. 
That's uh, a high tech keyboard too. Yeah. The, um, yeah. That's a really nice high tech one. Uh, impossible to find yeah. replacement keycaps. So one missing. <laughs> oh, they're interchangeable though with the um with the other ones. I'm fairly sure. No, they're not. Uh, as I found Aren't out. They? Yeah, so oh, that's okay. kind of annoying. Um, oh, it's a beautiful cool. keyboard. It feels really solid because they're mechanical. But um, yeah, I got a, another keyboard off David, so that should be good enough because realistically the third 2000 is just the motherboard is ridiculously destroyed. <laughs> oh, oh, there's a little micro B um, uh, Lego controller, which is pretty cool. Oh, is that what oh, it is? Cool. Yeah. Um, someone on eBay is absolutely selling individual keycaps for $35 each. <laughs> that's not this model though that's the uh, know, tech keycaps yeah, those are double that's shot. the 1000 mouse just there on top of the floppy drive isn't it uh yeah, yes it is there's yep. there the right angled so i'm sorry cameron is there anything else you'd like to talk about no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i've still got a heap of people to go through yeah, sorry <laughs> is there anything else we are, i'm gonna to, i'm gonna kill your sharing I to make up two, two months we now need to move on cameron is there anything else you want to say no uh, before I move on, in that my was, defense, it's been like before we kicked him out of the group. You mean? Yeah, that's obscene. In my defense, it's been about two years since I found anything, let alone, and in the space of like two months, I found rubbish, man. Two, you found that amazing file. Atari CD-ROM drive. Remember? That was six months yeah, ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. All right, great. Well, thank you, Cameron. That was amazing. Uh, I, I'm glad that you were able to recover that stuff and it didn't go to landfill. Um, thank very you very nice. much for getting in contact with me and telling me all about it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I just wanted to point that out. Hey, man, if you're not monitoring the group, I can't help everyone. Yeah, well, yeah. That might all have right. been you're on holiday. Right along. Pat Breen. Whoa. Hello, everybody. Um, I, uh, I, at the moment, I have, I was talking to Anthony today. I have a lot of gear being shipped over from Japan. Um, I've been kind of using as my storeroom for a little while because of, because of COVID, they, they, the stuff that I was buying that was sitting in their warehouse and they weren't charging me for storage and it was starting to accumulate. And, uh, now I'm shipping it all. Anthony had a crack at, you're not paying this much, are you? Like in terms of shipping. And I said a lot more <laughs> anyway. So, um, I have a lot of shit coming. I, um, <laughs> I've got, I, I, so, um, and actually, I, I have a Japanese JX coming, Anthony, so I'll take a look inside that when I get it. Really? Uh, so you've got the beige-colored one? No, no, no. It's a, it's a dark one as well. That They did two models, so the, the gray one and the... Yeah, I would love to one. see a gray one. Um, I haven't seen one. Yeah. I think so. my friend had one, actually. He buys a lot of Japanese um, IBM gear. Hmm. Cool. But, but that's got, like, the matching... But that's why I was looking at yours today. It has a matching one, the hard disk with, but it's got null written on it. And uh, yeah, it's anyway. I'll, it's got I'll show, null written on it. I'll show it to you when I get it. <laughs> like, like somebody's name is null? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might even have a screenshot of it somewhere, but I'll look I'll look later. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, should be some good novelty there. Um, what else? Um yeah, it's it's just probably a lot more, um, uh, uh, probably a lot more buying and organising than it is actually doing at the moment. Unfortunately, I think we were talking about the separation of those things. Um, Anthony, is the mouse ball saga over? Uh, I, I I hereby consider the mouse ball saga concluded. I have not looked at my mice um, recently, but they are still very short of mouse balls. Uh, what I would like to know is I have recently, when I say recently in the past, three, oh my God, in the past three months, I gave a mouse ball, just so you know, that was not dissimilar to this ball, to David, where he said he might code it with a material to see if it works as a mouse ball. And David, what do you have to say about that? Uh, work in progress, mate. Work in progress. Watch this space. <laughs> so the answer is you've done nothing with it. It's sitting in a box. Uh, it's, it's sitting it's sitting on the bar in the shed, ready to be. <laughs> yeah, the mouse ball saga, two years on, has not changed. <laughs> uh, should, should I mention that this one is actually a one-inch ball? Oh, that's perfect. Uh, do you have uh, vast quantities? I need about 15. No, I actually pulled this from a, a, a Logitech. 15, 13, oh, Logitech. Yeah, really ancient Logitech. It was absolutely destroyed. So well, that's I, cool. I, I thought of you and I collected it. 
Oh, excellent. Excellent. Because uh, for those who don't know, one inch mouse balls are the standard mouse ball size for the old Mac. I would, wouldn't, wouldn't call it a serial mouse, but it appears the to M100. be the M100. Yes, thank you. The M010. Yep. Uh, and uh, there's very, other than the Commodore 1351 and the Commodore Amiga tank mice, which you don't want to butcher for mice because they're equally as valuable. Uh, they you just can't get the balls from them because the other common balls are much smaller. So uh, we ventured out to get these things. Uh, big mistake, useless. Uh, ordering rubber balls is next to impossible. So yeah, we're still waiting for mouse balls. Okay, so Pat, uh, so, thanks for bringing that up. Please continue with your lecture. So it's, so it's not over. It's not over. <laughs> well, I, I mean, what are you bringing it up next month? I'm, I, I came 10, 10 minutes late to this thing, but I'm sure we must have mentioned that we had a pretty good session mm -hmm. today. And um, we had, what was it last month or two months ago, David? Last month. Last, last, last month. month. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, so I, I thought today's gathering was pretty impressive in terms of how many people came out and how, many, how much we had on display. So um, yeah, it was a good session. It certainly was. Cool. Have you been doing anything in the last month uh, other than acquisition? Not really. Not really. Cool. Honest answer. Yep. Very yeah. good. Well, thank you, Pat, uh, especially for your, uh, your distraction. <laughs> uh, David, tell me what's going on. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, a lot of Atari stuff turned up in the last sort of uh, seven days, actually. So, um, uh, the, was it was Lego was a name was, yeah. So uh, she had this pristine box Atari ten ten tape drive ten ten cables had never been out of the box, um, so there wasn't really a, a hole in the collection, but I think I found a niche for it. So, uh, <laughs> um, and a box 7,800 turned up today as well. Um, so that was nice. Um, my big saga was the, um, I was up in Sydney on Friday and Saturday and uh, uh, I'd some time ago bought a TI-99 Silver, uh, the 4A and uh, the associated peripheral expansion box. Uh, and I've been trying to work out a way to get it down because those boxes weigh a ton. Um, and I thought, well, I'm up there. I'll take an extra bag with me and the, the TI-99 will come in on carry-on luggage and the box can go in the, uh, in the hold. And uh, I made the fatal mistake of not having any wheels on my bag and the... Uh, the peripheral expansion box weighs a little over 20 kilos, um, but it made it home in one piece with all its cards intact and uh, it got unpacked at the, uh, the meet today and uh, uh, I'm still a bit lopsided from trying to move the thing around. I think I walked nearly a K with this thing, so uh, that was interesting. Um, uh, aside from that, um, today was awesome. Yeah, compared to last month, there was only the three of us last month. There was Ian, myself, and and Alan that came along, and then today there was what about twelve or fourteen people that came along. So that was really really cool. Um, uh, what else was there? Um, oh, uh, there was um, when Craig was last on. He was saying that he got. Uh, he got trolled by a particular guy. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, I had a, had a run in with the same fellow who was actually hiding his identity, which made things interesting. Um, so uh, we'll just give some clarification there. We're talking about the buy sell swap group. Uh, there was some comment regarding how safe it is, um, but sometimes there are people who aren't so safe. So continue on, please. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, um it was it was actually quite interesting because it was under a um alias. an assumed name yeah an alias uh and it wasn't until uh 
uh, I got an email from a courier that saying this stuff was coming down, that the, the real name came up and that's when it all went pear shaped. So that was interesting, but it's basically under control now. Um, and uh, aside from that, uh, and, a, and a, 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 an early model CPC 464 turning up just the other day, um, I've been in acquisition mode more, <laughs> more than doing mode unfortunately i haven't been around to do anything let alone uh, think about doing anything so so that's me done keep it short and sweet no worries thanks david greg no worries. you're up um haven't done a lot finally got the last piece of my puzzle the intellivision um, everybody's everybody's puzzle piece that needs to be completed yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's ever so slightly got some kind of issue occasionally when you turn it on just you get nothing do you have to hit reset sometimes that sorts it out sometimes it doesn't hmm. but it's real intermittent um i had um jason mccary do a composite model on it for me and um yeah he found exactly the same thing we're well, not sure exactly you flick the switch and you're measuring you're getting voltage on the board but it just doesn't seem to actually kick in once it does it's you know up and running and it's great and everything else um but yeah just this little nagging little intermittent thing just trying to get to the bottom of i don't know whether a recap might actually fix it up or hmm. and that but um other than that um it came with about six games all perfectly shrink wrapped that i haven't been game to over <laughs> and one of them was burger time the game i was after so anthony helped fix me up there with that and a couple of others but had a brand new in packaging the um, Intelli voice and yeah, it was just mad, but um, just learning how to pull the controllers apart at the moment. They just need a little bit of love and TLC yeah. and that. So you can buy new Mylars um, from, I saw that from sell my and okay. um, there's a guy who makes the fresh Mylars, but generally speaking, they just need a wipe down. That's, and then you just, that's what I'm thinking. You sit them back in. Uh, just look at the traces. You'll see that if they're intact, they're intact. If they're missing, yeah, you need new mylars. But generally, they just need to wipe down. There's some dust and stuff that gets in there, and it's good to go. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. So yeah, just uh, watching a few videos on how to unfold those and put them back together and that. And uh, but yeah, it's nice to have that piece of the puzzle complete. Cool. Uh, while I'm while we're talking about in television, Greg. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I bought another auction on eBay, and the only reason I bought the auction was to actually, you benefited from that auction. Yes, I did. Because I wanted the brochures. <laughs> is that all you got? <laughs> I wanted the brochures. So this is a beautiful brochure about all the products of Intellivision. I did so say I bought, that listed. And then there was all that's this is why I bought it. But what I thought was interesting was apparently the gamesmen were the Australian distributors for Intellivision products. And uh, so that's the only reason why I bought it. And I'm, li I'm, I'm trying to liquidate the rest to make my money back. But mm -hmm. all I wanted was the paperwork. <laughs> well, yeah. if, I can't, if I can't fix mine or it gets worse, I might have yeah, to uh, hit you up for another Intellivision. Right Special price just for yep. you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, that's about everything from me. Cool. No worries. Now, uh, Doug is either not here or he's got his camera off. So, Jim, did we meet you today at the expo? Uh, yes, I was there. I was at the last one as well. Um, oh, cool. I'm a friend of uh, David and, well, I know Jason as well. I'm a bit of an Amiga person. Um, I was coordinator of the Amiga user group uh, around about 92.3. Oh. So I've, I've had Amigas uh, for 30 plus years. Uh, on and off and uh, got out a couple of times and got back in a couple of times. Um, I recently, uh, from eWaste, was the one who picked up the A1000 for 20 bucks at an eWaste uh, with a 1081. Wow. Uh, and it all worked. I, and it all looks pristine. Wow. I picked out the, the CRT <laughs> was in a skip and the 1000 and its keyboard and its mouse was all in a mess of leads and wow. stuff in another Incredible. area. Yeah, keyboard and mouse. Pulled, pulled it all out and said, so what do you want for this lot? And he said, oh, 20 bucks. I said, okay. In the words of my and, friend uh, Jim, the bin doth provide. 
<laughs> and uh, skip guns. So I brought it home, didn't turn all. the monitor on for a day. Um, put it all together, plugged it in, turned straight on. No problems. Amazing. Um, I've a friend of mine, I'm no good with the soldering iron. So a friend of mine, Mark Benningfield, if anyone knows him, he loves Atari. Um, he's better with the soldering iron. I bought a Pasero 2 to go in it, if anyone knows what the Pasero is or the Pasero 2. Pi, pi Zero? No, Pasero. No, Pasero. Okay. Um, no. It's made by a fellow, um, what's his name? Dunkley. Dave... Something Dunkley. Yeah, that's it. That's Dave Dunkley, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in America, he's, uh, I think he was an XO of an airbase or something. Uh, he's a pretty switched on guy. Anyway, he, he makes these. Uh, the pals or gals or something have got to be changed over on the 1000 to accommodate the Pasero 2, which will give it boot, ROMs, choice, and um, micro hard drive. Uh, micro, uh, what do you call it? SD card, hard drive. So Mark's got that and he's been too busy to get onto it for me. So, But it looks pristine. The um, the, the keyboard still has the plastic over the logo, if you know. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was very good find. I, I also, uh, historically, I suppose, about a year ago, does anyone remember Arnie Robbins from the Amiga User Group 30 years ago? A software buyer service? He used to sell software? No. no. Okay. Anyway, he had a, a 4,000 that he'd had in his office for 10 years, not used, and um, all his old software. He, uh, so I, I bought all of that off him. And then sold the software off, which was uh, new old stock unopened um, on eBay to pay for the purchase of what I ended up with a 4,000 out of it anyway, wow. with a Picasso and uh, Ariadne. Um, by the way, has anyone got that little uh, that little connector that goes on the back of the Ariadne so you can get um, 10 base T? Do you know the little? I used to have a couple. So yeah, like the, I know the ones. 15, about a fifteen yeah. pin or something. Fifteen pin to yeah, fifteen pin to ten base T. Yeah. yeah. So, what is it? A A A U I. Oh, it's not A A U I, is it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What you're after is a transceiver. Absolutely. Yeah. So that that yeah. that technology isn't to make it specific. No, no, no. You're I agree. But it's a little it's a little adapter. Transceiver. Yeah. Well, mm. some of them aren't necessarily little. Some, some are of them are kind of like the size oh, of no. this packet. I, I had a couple, and they're only about an inch and a bit by an inch and a bit. And they just oh, the really back. new ones are. Yeah, yeah ones. you can buy like the 15-pin transceivers with 10 base T on it, probably 10 bucks on eBay. Yeah, well, I thought they wouldn't be expensive. But I used to have a couple, but, of course, in my ins and outs and going to and from and in and out of Amiga, I've... Lost I'll them. see if I can find you on an eBay while we're talking. Hi, William. Yeah, I, I, I think I met you there today or saw you there today at the swap meet. Yes, yes. I'm just waving by because it's sort of it's uh, coming up to coming up to bedtime because we're going to early start again in the morning. Um, so it's been a pleasure, gentlemen, and we will definitely catch up again either uh, on the next one of these or um, or at the next uh, the next uh, event. Awesome. Okay, Likewise, also, I'm going to call, I'll call it as well. I've got an early morning as well. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Amazing. And uh, who's the, whoever, the, uh, Cameron, you're, you're a lucky bastard. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm a vigilant bastard. You've got to keep an eye on these things. <laughs> good night, all. He waste, he waste is our friend. Absolutely. Yeah, he waste gods. So continue. Um, I, no, you, can I put that up? So yep. I picked up that mouse for he waste would have cost me a dollar or just with something else for nothing. Can't remember. What's so, the size of the ball? I don't know if it works or not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a ball. I missed the comment. Uh, what's the size of your ball? It's probably, I reckon, 0. 0.7 inch. That, it's an inch. I've just measured it while we were talking. You're kidding. But Can it, I have that ball? It's an odd color. Can I have that ball? Sure. Um, I don't oh. need the mouse. So. 
But have you seen a pink one like that before? Is it pink? Yeah. Don't tell me you're going to pick pick and choose. That, that's got to be for a specific machine, though. That, that's In, unreal. Unreal. That is a very strange before. ball. And it's one inch. Are you sure? It's 26.5 millimeters. 26.5 millimeters. Oh, it's a one. Oh, he's got an inch ruler, isn't he? 25.4. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Mm, that's worth at least 20 bucks, that ball. 22 22.50. <laughs> I forgot I forgot to um I forgot to mention I had my own Cameron Bond moment today. So when I went to go put up I I went to I got a storage unit. I went to put some shelves up in this storage unit. And um and the guy at the storage place went, "Hey. Hey, uh yeah, anyway, he, he started engaging me. He's seen that what what I store there." <laughs> He said, oh, I've got some old consoles for you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went around the corner and it was a um, it was an old G3 PowerPC Mac with like a, I think a multi-15 AV monitor or something like that. And then also some Packard Bell VGA monitor. To be honest with you, after I, I went, oh yeah, I'll take that, put it straight in my storage locker. And then I, I after about half an hour later, I was like, why do I do that? Because I, I'm not interested in any of those things, like and and so I'm and and I was thinking about it today, like when we were with uh, Lego today, and she was sort of saying, "Take this or take that," and I'm like, "I'm not taking any of this stuff," because it, I, I kind of want to, but I know that I shouldn't because it's it's just going to sit somewhere. Although and, you've got to admit that the 1994 Bureau of Statistics data is valuable. You took that, didn't you? I did. I fit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> It's going to go on archive.org and then I'm going to stick it on the shelf. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, just trying to read the model of this mouse. It says it's an E6Q mouse X31. Right. That's, that's <laughs> the one that's well known for its pink mouse balls. Excellent. It's, it's an odd shape. Yeah. So you got that at E Waste. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It Must could be, just be to be honest, it could be for an SGI workstation, hmm. or it's just a bog standard cheap it's three. nine pin connector. Not with three, but not with yeah, three, three, three buttons. Three, yeah, three buttons. That's that. That's drug induced. What's what's on the back of it? What's written on the back? That serial number. Well, that's that's what I. Uh, I can't see from the board. It does look like a cheap. Nah, trying to get it. Yeah, I think it's just a. Piece can't get it to focus. I, I reckon it's just one of those PC mouse that have three mouse buttons, that might cost of you cost you fifteen bucks. Back. Yeah, actually, it is. Yeah, I think if you wanted Anthony, it's twenty five dollars and forty cents. <laughs> it's yours. If you, are you in Melbourne, Anthony? I, I am. Yeah, well, I'm in East Burwood, so. Oh, uh, next swap you, meet. Bring it along. I'll, I'll give right. you a stainless steel mouse ball for it. <laughs> I'm paid. I'll give you a I'll give you a pack of Bell VJ monitor for it. <laughs> or a G3 Mac. But uh, look, I've had fun tonight. So thanks for uh, inviting me. Uh, David said I should come along, even though I'm just more of a collector than a builder. So, oh, no, everybody's um, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the invite, David. And. Uh, I've been on the Facebook group for a little while, so um, I just didn't feel like I had the right to come along. <laughs> oh, everybody does. Everybody does. Now, Doug. It, Doug. Awesome. I, I apologize sincerely. I was shoving some lamb into my mouth and I figured that people didn't, did, didn't need to watch me and um, enjoying some uh, lamb. Um, so what have I been working on? Um, Kerry Richmond um, here in the ACT, uh, the a ACT group recently ran a computer show out at, um, at a local community centre, which was an absolute hoot. They, they had um, an ASR33, they had some PDP-11 gear running, running Eliza, they had a whole pile of games machines that, to be honest, it, it was an absolute privilege to watch these kids 
playing with these 1980 video games. It was it was it was a really worthwhile thing. And I think that the ACT group is, is now trying to find a larger venue uh, because it was actually so successful. Anyway, Kerry Richards gave me a piece of tape, um, a, a piece of punch, punch tape. So I, I, I should be able to use that now, now uh, to get my ASR33 because you need something you can trust. And this little piece of punch tape has has the alphabet in it, so I can run that that uh, through through to actually verify that um, that my ASR thirty three teletype operates. Um, I've been mucking around around with the stringy floppy on on the Ted Terrace eighty. Um, I have vivid vivid memories with a Exidy sorcerer years ago with a stringy floppy, but. What I found is that 40 years um, doesn't do them justice to the <laughs> adhesive to be used within the stringy floppy. So if anyone knows how, how, to, how to rebuild some stringy floppy wafer, wafers, I would be very, very interested because it seems as though the microsecond that they snap, the party's over and there's no capacity to re rebuild them. So if anyone has any experience, that would be glorious. I hear that, that period of silence was to let the crickets happen. OK, cool. <laughs> no problem. Um, I've been mucking around. So um, in my last chat, I, um, I have a little uh, set of um, ECB boards, which were designed by a fellow named John Kaufman in the um, S in the S100 group. These are actually ECB format. So I actually recently put them into a little pl plastic enclosure with the appropriate warning labels on it, because if you put 12 volts up at the fundamental orifice, it'll have a bad day. Um, but this thing is a MS-DOS computer, runs ostensibly runs VGA. It has a couple of um, compact of a, a couple of S, SD cards. It boots off a compact flash drive. It has the obligatory three and a half half inch floppy. Um, what else would you possibly want except for perhaps a v, VGA board that was actually mapped to the VGA addresses? Um, it turns out, sorry, hang on just a second. Got the stupid talky talk thing happening. Hey Google, shut up. <laughs> I don't understand. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so sorry. That was just bizarre. Anyway, <laughs> every night at bedtime to remind the kids that it's bedtime. <laughs> anyway, so this little blue box, which I, I finally got around to laser cutting, is a is a um, eight hundred one eight eight processor because I have a fond 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 memory with the eight hundred one eight eight that is in this funny bizarre land between the eighty eighty eight and the eight hundred two eight six. Um, runs MS DOS five. Heap of fun. What else have I been working on? Um, I've got. I've been moving to installing GoTex in my uh, Terrace eighty. So I've got a. I, I've got a Terrace eighty model four P and a Terrace eighty model four. Um, Ian a very very genuine generously sold me a hard drive adapter for the model four, which is just glorious. Um, God, I wish we had hard drives back in, you know, 1980 squiggle. Um, that, that stuff literally didn't exist. But the minute you put mass storage onto some of these 8-bit machines, everything changes. But of course, now we live in a world where these things, our kids look at them and they're just an icon. They're not real. Um, to us, these things that actually do something. Whereas, whereas um, the drives and, and, and stuff to read them be, is actually becoming a little bit hard to maintain 
to the point where I recently told told a friend, of course, I, I can read 30 1.2 meg floppies for you, not a problem at all. And I started scouring my house and I actually realized last time I moved, the 1.2 meg floppy drives didn't survive the move. And you go, how on earth does that work? And then you look on eBay and you discover everyone's selling 1.2 meg drives like they're a little kilogram lump of gold bullion. And you go, that's just bloody frightening. So I'm slowly replacing all of my three and a half inch stuff with, um, with Gotex, which is officially people are going, going to look at and go, that's, that's just obscene. But we have, I've, I've got to start move, moving away from, from um, drives that, that uh, died. Um, Mark, if you're still online, I just thought I'd share with you a story when I was working at a chemistry lab at ADFA. Um, I saw you talking about using acetone, uh, cleaning a piece of um, plastic. Well, when you're working at the, at the chemistry lab at the Defence Force Academy, you can stroll into the um, stores people and say, hey, I, I want a really good organic solvent. And they go, here, have have a litre of this and you just start clean, cleaning something with this material and you discover later that it's actually chloroform. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, don't do that. <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. When, when were you at Adfa, Doug? Um, oh, uh, crikey, it's been about 1988, Department of, uh, of uh, Chemistry. I I was a I, I was a TO level one level two. I just just come out of the Australian National University as okay. a trainee TO. So um, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I was That's at Adfa. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I was at Adfa <laughs> between I was at yeah. Adfa between ninety six and ninety eight. So uh, okay, cool. So um, so so to be honest, my time at Adfa informed what I do now. Um, we installed this bizarre piece of black coaxial cable and someone told me that it could carry 1,024 terminal sessions. I looked at them and said, what? <laughs> and lo and behold, it was this ethernet stuff. And um, yeah, it, it, that whole thing. And of course, in the... In 1988, the machines that we were deploying were all S100 based, um, but um, um, we saw the move of the IBM PC80. Uh, we saw the demise of the um, Z80 based machines in the um, in the laboratory environment. And, and environment, but yeah. I'll never, ever, ever forget spotting this, this this piece of black cable and going, I have to understand how this thing works. Because, you know, to, to be able to, 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 to transport 1,024 terminal sessions was just, you know, you can't do that. that that's just no, nonsense. Anyway, this is now. Um, Stuart, just by the way, I've actually made a couple of notes. Your Apple II Euro Plus is absolutely going to have a couple of reefer capacitors in its power supply. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for them to go. That's all right. Uh, they are waiting to go off. I, I, that's, I, half, I, that's half the fun. I mean, no, it's not because they stinky. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> they don't corrode your border wine. So. No, that is true. But uh, yeah. yeah, but. Um, that's basically me battling along, keeping my TRS-80 fleet happy. Perfect. Um, staying off of eBay as much as I possibly can because I, I hear people who have said that they've, that they've hit maximum equipment collection because there's literally nowhere to slot machines anymore. My beautiful partner is happy for me to buy anything. And she gen genuinely said, "Yeah, no worries. Click the go, 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 go now button." But um, where do you put it? <laughs> Get a bigger house, Doug. No, I can't. <laughs> shelves, shelves are amazing. <laughs> you know, they say bigger house, bigger joy. 
<laughs> bigger house, happy spouse. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, but then you can't afford to buy more equipment. Yeah. That is true. Okay, I'm done. Thank you, Doug. Um, I'm the only one who probably hasn't spoken, but I've pretty much summarized what I've said. I got Jumpman for the JX. I got some more in television titles. I bought a couple more in television combos because I just wanted minor pieces of documentation. I just won an auction for three in televisions the other day. Because <laughs> you know what? You always need more. Uh, but uh, because I've got so many box titles, I'm going to just continue liquidating my excess excess with these spares. I'm assuming that the three that I get work. Um, plus, I got the computer module, the keyboard, uh, 50 titles, heaps of stuff. It was a great deal. And there's one book I was missing in this auction. So now I've got that. So uh, you should see some more in television auctions. Uh, I, I got to tell you, everybody, in television is the best. Get out there. Get on it. You need to buy one of my auctions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a special deal. If you shout out to me. Um, 8250. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, not much going on. Went to the expo today. It was great. First time I, I think it's the first time I met Pat was today. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, I think I met Pat for the first time today. Um I've met David too many times. Met Jim for the first time today. Um, yeah. Look forward to seeing you Melbourne people the next thing. Now, um, Cameron, you mentioned PAX. Um, if you ever need anything at PAX, you should shout out to us because we're more than welcome, more than willing to assist all of us. But we don't know how we can add value at PAX because for us old time retro people, we don't actually really understand how we fit into a show like PAX, but should you'd be, you'd be surprised how kids love all that stuff. So my there's a museum section where it's all locked in, you know, display cabinets. So my museums for this year are going to be Battle of the Cheap Computers, like ZX81, um, Mattel Aquarius, things like that. And the other one is Aussie stuff. Australian games, Australian computers, Australian joysticks, whatever. So I don't have a lot of Australian stuff. So yeah, if you've got a good idea for some Australian things, and yeah, I'd be does happy it have to, to be it. Australian? Well, that's just my particular little museum piece that I'm setting up. So oh, yeah. I, I, I let one on my Battle Station Two yeah. go a month or so ago. That would have been good to, yeah, yeah. to have. So, well, I've yeah. got like the Star Cursor and the you know, VZ Two Hundred and the System Eighty and just Micro B. Because it'd be cool if a few of us. Like uh, there's quite a few who like, like I mean, if Rob, myself, Pat, yourself, anyone who likes video games, because I gotta say it's it's nice. I had a couple of young people today playing me in television, yeah. and uh, it would be neat if we could have a little setup where people could appreciate it. And needless to say, I've got a few in televisions. Especially, well, you couldn't you couldn't yeah. talk them into buying one off you. Well, I could offer them a special yeah. deal on the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean. So the PAX is just that... fun to go to, even if you're not really into the main crux of it. I mean, just the spectacle of it is pretty amazing. Um, so you just hang out at the retro section because there's like 15 pinball machines, 10 arcades, and probably 30. So how do people systems. like us get involved? Um, well, I mean, the retro guys, there's about probably 10 of them, uh, maybe a dozen. So there's different businesses that it's all free, like, you know, we'll give you the space for free and you can advertise your pinball business or whatever like that. So that's the general agreement with PAX. I don't have a business. I just go because it's fun. Yeah, I don't have a business. No. no. So, you know, um, generally uh, it depends what the setup is. So my thing this year is setting up retro PCs. So I've got Duke Nukem on a couple of 486s. Um, an iMac, a bubble iMac, a 5150, stuff like that. Because cool. um, PCs have been neglected, but um, it's mostly like you know, Nintendos and things like that. But the museum section is always amazing because people bring out their insanely rare whatevers, um, you know, development kits for Sega Saturns and, you know, stuff like that. So that's generally the vibe. I'm kind of the guy that does the real old school stuff, uh, like, you know, earlier 
early systems. I, I, I take a Vectrex, for instance. Um, you know, so and they all get played. So yeah, kids, kids love all that stuff. Cool. But um, I think someone else is bringing a in television this this year. So, yeah, but Anthony's raffling one though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that could be the prize. I could probably, I could probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to take Coleco Vision, but if someone else has taken it in television, um, we'll just do one at a time. No, Coleco versus in television. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that uh, with some of the remakes that we've got over here, I can assure you that we could kick the Coleco Visions. Oh, really? Does it have a little steering wheel? No. Nobody wants that. It's actually, <laughs> nobody really wants a Coleco Vision steering wheel. That's awesome. I mean, anyway. there'd be the point where you attach the super game module to the ColecoVision and basically run MSX ah, models. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Atari games. Yeah, I mean, the Atari games. We can do the but Atari both, ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but both Coleco and Intellivision have Atari adapters, so. Yes, they do. Cameron, you, you need yep. my um, Amstrad GX4000. What a what a what a fantastic games console that is! It is a beautiful thing. <laughs> that and the Commodore sixty four GS. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, for... What a beautiful cartridge machine! All right, give I, me some I... give me some ideas for the battle of the cheap computers. I thought, well, um, I'll because people that modern kids and stuff don't understand how shit computers got and how they were trying to push them all. So I'm going to take I got a Mattel Aquarius. I got a Sword M five. Oh wow. I got a Commodore 16, I think is would be considered a cheap, oh, cheap yeah. computer. Yeah, be um, better if you had a 116. Yeah, I've got I don't have a 116. I've got one. Yeah, got one. Got one. yeah, yeah. the 116 yeah. is a basically a miniaturized version of the plus four and it has the rubber chiclet. So keyboard. weird. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Would you consider a Vic 20 in that space? Yeah, the Vic 20 was. Mm -hmm. So they was, sort of, yeah. When the sixty four came out, the the Vic twenty basically filled that niche. So yeah, yeah. So I've got a six hundred XL, Atari six hundred XL, and Atari four hundred. I, I think they tick the box. Yeah, I was going to say the four hundred cheap computers. Sure. Yeah, that that the that membrane keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, but the four hundred yeah. really was ZX eighty. Cheap. You want membrane keyboard? Go back, back ZX, there. I got a ZX eighty one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, uh, you can say a lot of things about the one one six. But I can tell you that membrane keyboard oh, is go. heaps better than a ZX80. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. That that's just glorious. Thing. Yeah, I mean, this is a dream keyboard to use. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah. If anyone wants to put their specialized things, it's they're in locked glass cabinets. So we've had some really expensive stuff in there before. We had a, a BBC signed by David Brabant, uh, for oh, instance, like the one the he actually made Elite on. <laughs> what about the um, Sega? Um, or oh, Sega? Um, uh, three thousand, yeah. Would that Is be that considered a, a like a no. cheap computer? Oh yeah. What? yeah, I reckon it would be. Like I, I, I remember when I saw oh. it, that was definitely on for sale at Big W when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is, with all of those those displays, yep. the static looking, observing things make sense to people like us. We can look at it and go, oh, "It's a widget." Yeah, you gotta whereas, pick. You gotta pick your battles. Like, you whereas yeah. the stuff that the kids can actually play, yep. Galaga or you know 1942 or let's go all the way back, you know Wampus. Yep. Oh my God, um, where they can be in, interactive. That's the stuff that the kids, kid, kids connect with. Even even here in Canberra, when when I went to this little community center. There was this bunch of four Commodore machines, and the kids were, "Oh my God, this is so cool!" Yeah, and, I that, love it. and that they were just batshit boring Commodore games. <laughs> and 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 it turns out that stuff doesn't exist on their mo mobile phones. No, our oh, kids love it because they're physical. Kids don't own they're physical. Things That's anymore. right. It's just yeah. like when they buy a game, they don't really buy anything. They just exists on the ipad or something right that's exactly right uh, every, every time i've set it up for kids and stuff virtual. they they love it so yeah like most of it is interactive the, the museum stuff's just for nerds to geek out on yeah really. well <clears throat> well cameron should you need any support i think you'll find that there's some people who would be more than happy to help you in melbourne yeah, yeah great like um uh, i'll put a post out because we're just organizing it all now please I tag think. me please tag yeah. me and me yeah, yeah. and david
Uh, Every I, previously, and, and I and Pat and Pat Breen and Pat previously, Breen. I I take the spare ticket that like they give us some spare tickets, and I like anyone who contributed something, I'd I'd give it to them for like it come in for like three hours, check it, check the joint out, and then take it away. But this year, they're putting names on them all. I think they've uh, figured out our little ruse. <laughs> <laughs> and Henry yeah. and Henry I, needs to come too. I've and Rob. So I've got a pass, but I'm I'm on the fence of whether I'm actually going to go because. Yeah, you know, I got the C thing. I don't want to get the C thing again, and that's what I'm concerned about. My, my strat is getting a booster right before packs. That's my strat. I so here's the problem. Here's the problem for me. Fourth booster. When I got COVID, my yeah. window expires the weekend of packs that I can't before I can get a booster. Oh, you're right. The time. So I'm 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 in. I'm up shit creek at the moment. Yeah. Like You've taken in ninety five. Done. Yeah. I mean, ninety five should should be should be good, right? It's it's. The numbers are if people are unmasked, they don't, they don't, N95s will hold, but they won't hold long. No, yeah, they're not magic, but you know, <laughs> it's yeah. all a risk versus reward. Um, yeah, you know, it's the whole anyway, thing. Uh, we understand your concern. Um, yep. we should all get boosted and wear masks, <laughs> but yes, I, I hear this. I got COVID and it wasn't pleasant, so no, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I'm guessing not Rob, nice. since the month of July was terrible for Rob, I'm assuming that he also had a bad time too. Yeah, yeah I, it was. It basically, it was like I was. It wasn't bad, but it threw me mentally. Um, yeah. I it it was more of a mental hit than a physical hit. I yeah. won't say much more than that. Yeah, it is. I, oh, I had a week. Of, I had a terrible week, and then I had weird symptoms every third day for about five six weeks after that. Yeah, okay. like I'm still. Right. I've still got yeah. the fatigue. So, yeah, mine so stopped I, after six weeks, Rob. So there's some hope. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like my, my mic's still going. Yeah, that, that's basically like ruled me out of a bunch of stuff that I do. Like I yeah. stopped doing game streaming because I could only do that in the evenings after work, and I just was too fatigued. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I noticed. It just really knocks you out. Yeah, it's rough. All right. Well, now that we've spoken to everybody, let's wrap this up. So, uh, is there anything anyone else would like to say before we say goodbye? Crickets mean that we. Oh uh, well, actually, happy. I forgot to, I forgot to mention that I lined up um a deal for a whole heap of uh, PC gear for a friend of mine, David. Um, was it seven? I think new old stock five and a quarter inch drives. And uh, wow. a whole heap of other bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, for eighty dollars. So, That's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was just a random ad, and I was just um. I, uh, on Facebook, and I sent it to him. I don't know why no one else had picked it up. He drove up from the Sunshine uh, from yeah, from the Gold Coast to um, to take it, and um, yeah, eighty bucks for just an absolute boatload of gear. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, so um, you yeah, can, my... you can comfortably sell them for about one hundred and twenty bucks each on um, e e e pay. Yeah, I'm not too sure what he's doing with them. Yeah, yeah, but um, he's offered me a few bits and pieces. Uh, he's actually, um, I think he's got a five megahertz um, DMA controller too that should work for my spare PC3 that needs a new um, chip as well and a few other bits oh, and cool. pieces. So it was quite a quite a good pickup for him. It's just a matter of him finding the time to sort through it all and get it all moved on. He's got a lot of stuff going on, like we all do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and that's it, yeah. Cool. Um, thank you very much. Um, I didn't quite know what it was going to be like, but it's gone for an hour and a half longer than I thought it would, but it's been awesome. Sorry. Um, thanks for that. <laughs> ah, good. Well, uh, no, no, you, cool. Michael, just so you know, you can just tell us to shut up at any time. <laughs> it's very casual. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, you're welcome to hang around for as long as you want. Uh, it's all a bunch of fun. No, it was, it was lovely. My, my only regret is that I... Um, presumed to explain what happens when you put capacitors in series to a bunch of people who clearly know that stuff backwards so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no, i'm a rank amateur so I, I i don't know a lot so um a guy. <laughs> yeah same so I, I i tinker but um i never really remember everything i need to remember to fix all the crap that i've got so i really should <laughs> start offloading some of it to people who could actually fix some of the stuff but uh yeah oh well
Yeah, and my advice to everybody is at the end of this call, go and find two pieces of gear, open up the boxes, and make sure that there are no batteries waiting to leak. That's yeah, all. Do a battery sweep Simple and a riffer sweep. Absolutely, a, ba a battery sweep and a riffer sweep. No, riffers, so riffers are sweet. just a pleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're stinky. They taste <laughs> just like, oh my God. They smell like someone's been Days. smoking in your oh. bloody study. You cannot oh. get that smell out of your house. No. Oh, no. It's ages. <laughs> just, just look, look, look. The, the whole, I end up in all of these fascinating discussions with my people when I tell them, just remove them. Yeah. People go, oh, you have to replace them with the equivalent component. Yeah, just snip them out at very oh, least. Snip them out. You literally don't. The Chinese power supplies and the solar chargers in the world have made the suburban noise for so it's just noisy. Don't worry. Take the things out. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you, every Apple II you fire up that hasn't been turned on in 20 years, it's going to go. Within, within three Absolutely. minutes. <laughs> anyway. Accurately. All right, guys. Take care. Right, cool. Take care. Thanks, guys. Now, before you go, just a reminder, the next event will be Sunday, the 11th of September. So uh, I'll advertise that. This video and the last video, which I failed to compile, will go up on YouTube shortly. Uh, when I say shortly, I mean within the next two weeks. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, especially for the people who came to the physical catch-up in Melbourne today. That was really great to see everybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, have a, uh, a great week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Hank. Yeah. See you later. Bye, Bye. 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 B